Chris Mason up first. The man that keeps telling us he's...
The Moda Super Series, brought to you in association with Bet365, Betfair, Betfred, Coral, Labrooks, Paddy Power, Unibet and William Hill. And so it all comes down to this. A very good evening and welcome to the grand finals of the Modus Super Series here from the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Come the end of tonight, someone will win the £20,000 first prize and call themselves the Super Series champion. And we are going to do it in the company of the former players champion, Paul Nicholson. And I have to say, Paul, it's absolutely bouncing in here tonight. It feels like a real big occasion. It really does. I remember the first night I spent here on a Saturday night and the atmosphere was spine tingling, but tonight is a different level, as it should be, because we have six players who have done extremely well to get here tonight. There will be a few nerves, but we can't ignore the fact that tonight is probably going to change someone's life. It is a life-changing night. Let's see how the six players got to this final as we look back at the Champions Week highlights. Chris Mason's fairy tale return to the hockey continued on Thursday night. He produced one of the shots of the week, this stunning 1 3 2 check out on the ball on his way to the last six. Mace the Ace continues to prove he is more than just a commentator. Lee Evans had a group A to forget as the form he showed in week five eluded him at the start of the week. However, this stunning 1 6 4 finish helped him turn things around to finish runner up in Group C here in Champions Week. Daryl Pilgrim only lost one game en route to Champions Week, and it was more of the same on Thursday night in Group B. Friday wasn't quite as plain sailing, but this 1-10 outshot helped the Flying Eagles soar into tonight's ultimatum. Josh Payne may have been a late substitution into this week's Battle Royal, but the group favourite still managed to inflict maximum pain on his opponent. This 1-5-2 heartbreaker proving vital in top in Group C. Conan Whitehead once again employed a strategy worthy of any barbarian, making his move on Friday night to claim victory in Group B. Savaging the field with shots such as this 144 showstopper. And it was aces high for the gambler in Group A as Graham Musher knew when to hold him and he knew when to fold him against his colleagues. This jackpot 170 finish stacking the deck in his favour to book his place at the top table. Jack Goward there with the highlights from Champions Week. And Paul, let's look back then at the week in chronological order. And first of all, look at Group A. It was won by Graham Usher, but boy, did he win it in some dramatic circumstances. I don't remember the last time we saw three players on the same amount of points in a Group A scenario. And the fact that Graham Usher was given the opportunity to win that group is to the chagrin of Graham Hall, who never really recovered from missing an opportunity to make Saturday night on Wednesday. Obviously, commiserations to him, but now that Graham's got the chance, he's got fireworks in his pocket. He's got that real explosive nature. He's going to be really hard to stop tonight. But that Group A was gripping all three days. It really was. And so then the players were divvied up into Group C and B, respectively. Group C was our focus on Thursday and Friday afternoon. And this was how it panned out, because Josh Payne ended up winning the group from Lee Evans in second. But we did have a dramatic final game to see who got the second spot through that group. Yes, we did. I mean, let's face it, Josh Payne is one of those players who just knows how to make Saturday night. He's never failed to make a Saturday night. But... The other story for me, as far as this group is concerned, is the fact that Lee Evans was able to turn things around after becoming the player at the bottom of the table in Group A, and in a matter of two days, he was able to turn things around just to get to the Saturday night. The Group A curse, will it come back again? It, we've seen one player throughout the course of the last 13 weeks make the Saturday night after winning Group A. That's the curse that Graham Usher's trying to break. But as far as Josh Payne and Lee Evans are concerned, they're really going to fancy their chances tonight. 
They most certainly will. And one player will also fancy his chances is Conan Whitehead. He came through Group B alongside Darrell Pilgrim and Chris Mason. And last night, Conan really was fired up for the occasion. I don't think there's ever been an occasion where Conan has been this fired up, maybe with the exception of the time where he made the quarterfinals of Lakeside. And this atmosphere lends itself to the Barbarian. He's got support out there. They want to see him get his best ever paycheck. And I just get the feeling that he's relishing this task, but he's got a tricky, tricky group. Do you believe Chris Mason when he says he's just a commentator these days? Yes, I do, actually. I think the amount of pressure that he's taken off his shoulders over the last couple of weeks has allowed him to play at the level that he's needed to have to get his way to this. This is a fairy tale, make no mistake. He knows it too, but he understands that as the outsider tonight, there's no pressure on him. The other players, they've got to be the commentator, and Chris is saying he's that, not a dart player, but he can still play. We're going to see him a little bit later on this evening, but our first game this evening sees Graham Usher up against Lee Evans. We caught up with both players ahead of their Champions Night campaign to see how they're feeling ahead of the big occasion. Lee Evans up first. How important is it to win that first game? Always. You always want to have to go good start, don't you? You want them points on the board. You want just relaxes you down for the next one. Doesn't guarantee you're getting through, but it just makes it a bit easier. It's very split this one. Two days off. Help or a hindrance because it's very split. Um I don't really know. I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> About one o'clock. Um, no, I am not a great practice anyway. I wouldn't sort of go places and practice and things like that. So I don't have a board um at home anyway, so yeah, just chilled out. Say, so, my mate come down yesterday. We played a few games of pool yesterday. A few games today. Got beat. Oh, we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Tough opening game, though. Graham Asher, the man that won Group A and the favourite leading into this evening. Is it important you attack him early on? Oh, got to. Yeah, just grind your teeth, go straight from the first leg. Because he's he played well, but he's also had two days off now as well. So it could, anything could happen. Like he, if I play my good game. I've got every chance. £20,000 for the winner. Are you dreaming of that cheque yet? Sure. Don't know about dreaming. I'd <laughs> get me a magic lamp as well with that. But <laughs> um, Yeah, it'd be nice, but I'll just take each game as it comes. That first game is going to be hard, and it's all about that first game at the moment. So, and those are the thoughts of both players ahead of the first game of the scene. Let's have a look then at the two groups in play this evening going into our Champions Night. The top two from each group will progress their way through to the semi finals, where it will be a straight knockout from there. Darrell Pilgrim, Graham Usher, and Lee Evans are in Group 1. Whilst we'll have a look at the tough looking Group 2, we see Chris Mason, Conan Whitehead, and Josh Payne do battle. We'll focus on Group 2 in just a second. Let's get our first game of the evening underway. It is Graham Usher up against Lee Evans. And to get the boys on the stage, it's our MC and referee for the evening, Charlie Corsafine. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Modus Super Series. We are live on Sporty Stuff TV, and it's finals night here at the Modus Live Lounge in Portsmouth. <laughs> and now would you please welcome to the stage our players for match number one of the evening, Firstly, it's the gambler, Graham Usher. And it's Ebbs, Lee Evans. the night that they've all been dreaming of over the last 12 and a half weeks these players have thought wouldn't it be nice to be here on the final night of stage one they are here and they now have a chance to get 20,000 pounds in their back pocket for the very first time with no exception every single player tonight is playing for the biggest paycheck of their career and it could be a paycheck that changes their life. Not just in darts either. 
This is Lee Evans. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. First but it will be Graham Usher to, to get us going here Dang in on. group number one. Three players in group one. You've got Usher, Daryl Pilgrim, and Lee Evans. In group two, 100. you've got Conan Whitehead, Josh Payne, and Chris Mason. We will focus on group one to start. Two players will go head-to-head -head here, and then we will have another 57. game per player after that. I'm Paul the Asset Nicholson. And I'm joined by Corinne Hammond tonight. A very big warm welcome to you, Corinne. Ah, oh, thank you, Paul. It's lovely to be here. It already looks a little bit different. The last two nights that I've been here, there's not been any crowd in. So it's, it's a bit weird looking at the graphics here and seeing people sitting in the background. But what an amazing experience for these players 56. to be able to get up there and play in front of this crowd tonight. Definitely. I'm sure there will be a, a few first 100. game nerves. And we haven't seen Graham Musher play since Wednesday afternoon, of course, because he won Group A by playing the first three days of the week. He was mightily 100. impressive, Graham, you if not a little bit fortunate to win the first Group of the Week. But he's starting very, very well. He's got 84 97. left. And leaves himself on a tidy two dart after 12. It certainly doesn't seem at this point that the two days rest has done him any damage. Now, there is that curse that we keep talking about. People who 84. win Group A Graham, but don't have success 64. on Saturday a couple of days later. Graham is the kind of player who doesn't care about that. 32. And he will come back for that 32 bed. No matter what Lee Evans does here. He is quite a deliberate player as Lee Evans. He likes to take his time if he's not comfortable. One hundred and twenty-five. That's good pressure. Graham, you require thirty-two. What can Usher do? Game shot. That's on the what first he can leg. do. It's a seventeen-dot start to get us underway. And do you feel that there is pressure on Graham Usher tonight because he's supposedly one of the favourites by winning Group A? Of course. He doesn't strike me as the kind of player is. Um that will feel that kind of pressure. He seems very relaxed and, and very comfortable in the fact that he hasn't played the last two days. So, yeah, I, I think that he'll he'll do okay. We're just going to have a little break in proceedings. I think we just need to make a slight adjustment to one of our cameras. So I'm just going to get your perspective, Corinne, about who you think is the favourite tonight because the bookmakers make Josh Payne the favourite and miraculously, he's the favourite going into tonight's finals even though he didn't win one of the weeks to qualify. Yeah, that is a little surprising, actually. But obviously, his performance over the, over the days that he's played has warranted that favourite place. Personally, I can't really see past Conan. Conan was amazing last night, almost unplayable at times. Dropped off towards the end, but I know that he's got that real passion for it. He's got that real win, will to win. So, for me, he's my favourite. Strangely, fourth favourite tonight. Conan Whitehead, maybe a sign of the tricky group he's in. Chris Mason, the outsider. Mm -hmm. What kind of fairy tale would it be if he was to go all the way tonight? Wouldn't it just be a fairy tale? But, you know, as Mace does, he just flies under the radar. He keeps saying he's not really a dart player. He's a commentator. And I think that served him well, actually. And maybe that's actually a tactic from him. Do you get the feeling as well that all of the players in Group 2 are under a lot more pressure because of what they've done in the past or how they've played this week. Maybe all of the players in Group 1, two of them we're seeing in the first match, are maybe going under the radar a little bit? It definitely does seem to be. There doesn't seem to be as much talk about the players in Group 1 as what there is in Group 2. So that could relieve a, bit, a little bit of pressure from them as well, and they can just get up there and relax and play. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens in Group 2, actually. But I, I just wonder if uh, Chris Mason's thinking, Do you know what, this could revive something. There's been a lot of talk this week about whether him winning tonight would spark him going to a qualifying school campaign, but I think we know better than that. But as far as Group 1's concerned, when it comes to Usher, Pilgrim, and, of course, Lee Evans in that group, if they were to win tonight or maybe even get to the final with £10,000 for the runner-up, what would that do for their careers going forward financially? I think it would really allow them the freedom to go and chase what they want to do playing darts. I would expect that they probably will go to Q school. Although I was saying earlier that uh, there might be some players who think Q 
Q school's not right for me right now. If I've got the opportunity to continue playing in this, in the Motor Super Series, um, because obviously you can't play if you've got a tour card, they might choose to do that for another year or so, see how they go, really prep themselves to make a, a good hard dent at Q school the following year. You have actually played in this tournament when it was called the Live League. How is your reaction uh, gauged what this venue is like compared to the previous Second one? Leg. As it's we are about to get first. back Game underway, on. but I'm going to give you that question anyway. How does this compare to our previous venue in Southampton? There is no comparison at all. This is, you know, this is an amazing venue to play in here and, you know, no squeaky floorboard. It's amazing how many times we talk about that squeaky floorboard. 100. But nothing squeaky about that first leg for Graham Usher, who... Over the course of 15 games, 140. on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, it won 10 of them for 20 points. He was one of three players on 20 points at the end of that Group A campaign. But even though they couldn't be separated on points, they could be separated on leg difference. And it was Graham who was the master of that. 60. And in fact, over those 15 games, he averaged more than anybody else as well. 92.17. For 15 games, that's an excellent standard. Yeah, that, that is an excellent standard. To be able to maintain 41. that over 15 games is just shows the quality of player that he really is. Well, interestingly enough, when it comes to Lee Evans, who 28. finished bottom of Group A after Wednesday's play, he was able to turn things around and get second spot in Group C. Lee is the only player coming into tonight's finals who is averaging under the actual average for the whole stage, which... Coincidentally, is exactly 86. 70. For the week, Evans is at 82.85. So he's the only person under par in a bad sense. 100. Coming into Saturday Lee night. Lee required 150. You think we're going to get the Simon Whitlock here of the three bulls? <laughs> that would have been, uh, yeah, a good bet. Obviously not. 100. I suppose we have to mention the fact that you've got two Australian representatives in the commentary box tonight. But 60. we've got six English Lee players tonight. Lee require 50. There's a lot of hand rubbing going on up there, isn't it? Is that nerves or is it just trying to get a bit of traction on the fingers? That single 18 is only just found. 42. And there's a bit of a Graham whisper from Evans there. After he misses two shots at double. Can this be pinched? Just going back to the hand rubbing there, Paul, it could also be the fact that it's probably a lot warmer 53. up there tonight than what it has been Lee during the week with eight. all the lights on, the crowd there, whereas during the week, not as many lights, not as bright, not the same kind of heat. Excellent point. So a very different Six. proposition for these two players. Graham, you require And Evans 60. continues to miss doubles. Usher might not. Game shot and he the doesn't. second leg. Takes a huge advantage in this match now. And we can't ignore the fact that when you play on Saturday night, it's ruthless. Third leg, it's Two Graham games per player first. in each group. Game on. And leg difference. If you get a big win, you could be through just playing one match. Yeah, absolutely. And 99. we have seen a couple of nine dart shootouts in the, in the last few weeks when it's come to finals night as well. So, yeah, anything is possible. If we ought to get... A third nine dart shootout. 100. The most likely scenario is that all three players get the same result. One win, one loss. 60. And three games of the same score. To say that we never had one in all of the time that we were in Southampton. We come to Portsmouth, we've had two. Who's to say we won't get a third? 96. The first night that it happened, everyone was... Uh, the players themselves were going, what, what's going on here? What happens? What do, what do we do? What, what goes on now? It was fabulous, actually. I had to go into the practice room and tell the players what to do. Lee Shu and Ryan Finesse and Andy Hamilton were getting ready to do the bullseye shootout to see who went first. And Conan Whitehead, who's here tonight, he was sitting down on a chair here by saying, I'm so excited, I'm so excited. I just want to watch this. Graham Usher is doing more than watch right now. He's averaging a steady 85. And Evans is playing a bit more like he did in the first three days of the week. One hundred. 
But that's the first maximum of Saturday night. And it gives Evans a chance to get back in the game. 44. Lee requires 67. Most players go treble 17 here, but not the only option. You could go treble 9 here, Corinne. He's going to try double 16 again. And he's going to take his time. 35. Graham, closer, five, 58. But not close enough. He's really having some trouble with these doubles so far tonight. 48. He's been afforded another opportunity Lee to come back and correct 32. Below. Let's see if he can hit it. Are we seeing finals night nerves? I think we are. It's understandable, really, when you think about you know what they're actually playing for and then all the hype that's Game surrounded it all as well. Line. So it, it is quite understandable that there would be some nerves. I concur. And I was doing a little bit of digging because I like to fall down the statistical Fourth rabbit hole. To throw first. It's a very matrix-style place with lots of letters and numbers. But the one thing that grabbed my attention more than any other thing was the biggest payday for all of these players in their careers was Josh Payne making the second round of the World Championship on three occasions. So he's banked £15,000 on three separate occasions, but no player has ever made £20,000 from one single tournament night like this. Not even Chris Mason. 60. Wow. It's amazing. It just goes to show what kind of opportunity is being offered here. And these aren't even professional Nine. players. But they want to be. Yeah. And this is a really good stepping stone for them to be able to become those professional players. They have had a taste in the last couple of seasons. Both of these guys, in fact, have played in 36. PDC Pro Tour action with Evans getting a fair bit of success this season as an alternate player. 59. You may wonder why these semi-pros do get an opportunity without a tour card. Well, when the numbers are shy because some pros decide to take a break, they have to get them from somewhere, and they get them from the Challenge Tour Order of Merit. And some of these guys are pretty high up on that Order of Merit this year. In fact, Scott Williams, who was scheduled to play in 60. Champions Week this week, chose not to play because he was on the Pro Tour this week. And his replacement, Josh Payne. Mm. Yeah, Josh is clearly counting his 100. lucky stars tonight. Well, this is group one, of course. 100. Lee, you require I think we are seeing a bit of nerves in the gambler. A bit of a tentative nature. He's definitely slowed down since the end of leg two. Evans, with 75 left, had to go for the 25 and bull, really, with Usher on 133. Now, on this number, there is... 38. A school of thought that going treble 19 is better than treble 20. Because if you get the treble 19, you have a double double out. Whereas with 73, after 86. treble 20, you don't get that luxury. Lee require 40. Tops for 2 2. Game shot on the fourth Found. leg. Lee and that is a 20 dart leg. And the averages in this game are almost identical. As you can see, only 0 0.11 between them, only the one maximum found Game on. so far, which is a bit of a surprise. But I just wonder as well, Corinne, whether the pace of this game doesn't suit Graham Usher because he likes to get on with it. He likes to swiftly deliver, whereas Evans is a bit more deliberate. Yeah, you could be right. Some players do get put off by that, and it usually is the quick players. But you find a lot of the time that the quick players seem to pull the slower 60. player into their speed. You'll find a, a lot of slower players start playing a lot quicker than what they normally would. But obviously, Lee Evans is having none 97. of that. He's taking things at his own pace. They have played each other three times this week already because they were both involved in Group A. Evans took the first battle by four legs to three. But maybe to prove the point that we've just made, after getting used to the pace 
Usher then took the next two games by a margin, by four legs to one and four legs to nil. And his averages were better on Tuesday and Wednesday than they were against him on Monday. Leg five seems to be going a little bit better, but they want to finish the both of them after nine. This is more like it. One hundred and two. That was almost a big oh, outside there. required one hundred and sixty-seven. Well, he's responsible for the biggest out of the week. He had the big fish one seventy earlier on in the week. Yes, we were also treated to a one seventy last night from Young Kieran Tehan. That made my 40. day. Felt like it was Christmas. Graham, you require <laughs> twenty-five. It's not Christmas yet. No. We've got a lot of darts to deliver before Game shot the fifth comes. Leg. But Graham it might be Usher. Christmas for somebody tonight. 3-2 Usher, he takes the advantage once again. And you may be wondering, Sixth leg, it's why does Graham first. Usher have the darts in this contest? It's by virtue of the fact that he won Group A. It doesn't just get you to Saturday night, it does have some fringe benefits as well. First game that we will have from Group 2 will 100. be Conan Whitehead against Chris Mason. They've played each other a couple of times over the last 85. two nights. That will be a really interesting lineup because Mace has openly said himself his first game is not his best game. He knows that, he thinks about it. He you know, so whether he's after the last couple of days has, has tried to put that out of his mind, well time will tell. Whereas Conan is completely the opposite. He comes out like an absolute 59. bull at the game. Just seeing a bit of perspiration on the brow of the gambler. Just illustrating the point that Corinne made about the temperature in here, because if you add 60 or 70 bodies into this room, the temperature 41. is going to go up about three or four degrees minimum. There's a lot of expectant fans here tonight. A sold out Modus Live Lounge. 60. You also have to wonder whether now playing an evening session for Graham has an effect on him. I mean, he played Monday to Wednesday. There were morning sessions. He's had a couple of days off, and now he's coming in and playing in the evening. So that's different to what he's done all 99. week. 99. He's one of only two players tonight who have won on a Saturday night with us in this venue and the previous one. The only other person to do that is Conan Whitehead, who is the sheriff of Group 2, the first name on the sheet. So he has won here before. 58. But there weren't this Grand many people here. 157. For the match. He thought he was going to get a shot at the tops there. That's why he stuttered on dart three. 97. But now Lee Evans needs Lee this 152 to stay in the match. Because he's already seen Graham Usher hit a 60 checkout in this first match of Saturday night. That is perfect. He gave it every chance. But match starts are incoming for Graham the gambler. Requires 60. First chance to roll the dice. 21. He went for the right hand corner. Mm, he was obviously trying to miss that second Lee dart that he thrown 52. right above the, the wire there. The line wasn't right. Is he going to rue those misses? Evans perspiring now. Double 16. Could be his last chance to save the match. 20. Boys, he had some trouble down there. Graham, you require 39. Double 16. Game and shot. double eight. And the, the first two Graham points Usher. of the night for Graham Usher, who is now in command of Group 1. Lee Evans is going to need to win his next match against Daryl Pilgrim, which will be in match three. His destiny is in his hands, but he's going to need a big win against Pilgrim. If he stands a chance, he'll need to average more than 79, that's for sure. Usher winning with 33% on the doubles by the skin of his teeth, really, because it should have gone the distance. We'll go to group two after the break, which will be Conan Whitehead and Chris Mason to start things off after this short commercial.
Welcome back to the grand finals here at the Modus Super Series, where Graham Usher's got his campaign off to a perfect start as he gets the better of Lee Evans 4-2 in our opening game of the evening. Those are the stats from that particular battle. Graham Usher getting himself onto two points and getting himself in a really good position to qualify through to the semi-finals. A lot of people's fancy to win the competition. He may well be one step closer to doing so. So that is the first game of Group 1 completed. Group 2 is about to get underway with a meeting between Conan Whitehead and Chris Mason. And Phil Bars caught up with both players before the action got underway. Chris Mason up first, the man that keeps telling us he's just a commentator. Are you buying into that line? Uh, I've been with him the last two days. He's not just a commentator. He can still frog. But, I've, well, last night I played really well against him and hopefully I'll carry on that form tonight and we'll see where we are. 20 grand on the line as well. It'll be a career highlight payday for you as well. Are you thinking that far ahead yet? No, not yet. I just want to get out, get out the group of three and then it's two games and then, then you win. It's, it's as easy as that. You win two games, you win 20 grand. At the start of this two-week journey, it was only, spent only a week to start with, but now it's ended up a two-week journey. Have you answered many questions that you had for yourself as well? Yeah, yeah, a few. Um, yeah, my mindset's pretty good. I've watched a bit, a bit of it back, and whereas before I was quite petulant and would get quite down on myself, I seem to be managing that side of the game a lot better, but that's the beauty of dipping your toes in and not doing it full-time. So... Yeah, listen, it, there's, no, there's no negatives. It's been a wonderful experience, great group of people. Uh, it's great to watch this event continue to grow, but, you know, I still know my place and it's in the comms box. And I'm guessing you're hoping no nine-night shootout tonight. God, I don't think I could go. I think my elbow could handle it. It's absolutely, it's literally glowing. Um, and that's something I've got, I'm going to have to work on as well, obviously. Is, is, I mean, this has been in, incredible. Two weeks, what feels like just of solid darts. Because, of course, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I went back in the comms box, but... I was still practicing, so I've had no sort of downtime. Last one from me. <coughs> fairy tales only happen in sport. Will the ultimate fairy tale happen this evening? Oh, it would be. I, it's unlikely, um, but it would be incredible. It would be incredible. So, Conan Whitehead taking it one game at a time. Chris Mason looking to live the Super Series Cinderella story. Who's going to get their Group 2 campaign off to the perfect start? Corinne Hammond and Paul Nicholson are your commentators. But first, let's hand over to our MC and referee for the evening, Charlie Corstefine. Series. We are live on Sporty Stuff TV, and it's finals night here at the Modus Live Lounge in Portsmouth. And now would you please welcome to the stage our players. Firstly, it's the Barbarian, Conan Whitehead. And please welcome Mace the Ace, Chris Mason. Welcome back to the hockey. These two darting combatants. It should be a blistering game. We've seen them play the last couple of nights. They both made their way through Group B. Conan Whitehead was third in Group A earlier in the week, which graduated him through to Group B action. But the 36-year-old from Raynham in Kent Found his way to the summit of Group B with 12 points and a very commanding plus 13 in leg difference. But he's up against this man who calls himself a commentator and a very fine one at that. But a thank you, ladies and gentlemen. First leg, it's in the to BDO World first. Championship, which for in Hammond gave him his biggest payday of £9,700. If he wins tonight, he could more than double that. Yeah, as we keep talking Whoa! about, it's just an amazing opportunity. Here tonight. Oh, and Conan straight off with the 180s and into it. Well, if Conan is going to have his way, 45. He wants to take that fairy tale of Chris Mason and burn it. I get the feeling, watching him around this venue over the last couple of hours, that Whitehead thoroughly believes it's in his destiny to win tonight. Because if you look at his record over the last couple of seasons 
One he's been sensational with us. In fact, he's been the most prolific winner. But in Mason, he's going to have a very tough opponent 60. to get rid of. He's probably still thinking about the 1 3 2 checkout that Mace did to him on Thursday night. Apparently, they were both having a chat about that before it even happened. 135. Warming Coming up together and talking about some famous 1 3 2 finishes in history. How about a famous. Oh. That one came out of the 81. cannon with a little bit of heat. Yeah, it's those single Christian numbers. Big numbers 41. are always the hardest ones to hit. He obviously got a little overexcited there. The adrenaline rush threw it a little bit too high. And Mason is settling into this leg. Not going to get a shot at double 12. A fine try, though. 89. White head for first blood. 40. Looks at tops. He's been a master at double 10 the last few weeks. Commentator's curse. 30. Chris but it's over to the other 52. commentator, Chris Mason, for the first leg and a break of throw. Game shot on the first leg. Chris Mason. Well, well, well. A 14 dart break of throw. Maybe the fairy tale is not going to be Second burned. Second leg, it's Chris to throw first. He did be caught on. on Thursday by four legs to three in what was an okay match, but yesterday, Conan got his revenge with a 4 0 victory. Average in, in excess of 101. Yeah, that was an absolutely amazing game. During times of that, Conan was almost unplayable, um, which even, you know, Mace would say himself. 81. That's how he was. Interesting what Chris was saying with our colleague Phil Bars about his mentality in playing these days. He, he feels he can manage his emotions better than he did in previous times he's 52 years of age now he does qualify for seniors darts as well and he is going to be at the 95. seniors world championship in february there's a lot of people thinking because of the form he's shown over the last couple of weeks by winning last saturday night to get to this week that maybe he's a decent punt for that senior world, world title i think that's a fair shout and you would have to think that knowing I mean, he knows now in advance that he's going to be there, so he's going to be thinking about putting in the time and years to get So you probably see a better mace there than what we've even seen here in the last two weeks. Scary prospect for the people trying to get into that tournament. Corn and Whitehead scoring so far in this match has been exemplary. Conan require 145. He's looking to leave tops after this visit, but it's not going to happen. 85. That's still a decent approach from a man this week who is averaging just a shade under 89. But if you add the 180s he's had tonight to his weekly tally, he's had 100. 38. Conan, you require 60. That's more than anybody. He did say to me on Thursday night that he wanted to make sure that he had the most 180s, so he, he's 40. been gunning for that. Chris, you require 156. Oh, this will be a very unexpected 2-0 lead. I'm actually surprised that, that Conan has missed. Well, what's he had five darts at a double now in this in this match? Because his doubles were really good last night. And generally Conan, you require speaking, 20. his quite good. Need to be this time. Mason is on double eight. 15. And he might get a 2-0 lead. Chris, you require 16. That's now eight missed darts at double Game shot Mason on the second missed one. Chris and he Mason. gets the jump. Well, there's maybe a little bit of... Well, what's the Third right leg word is there? to throw first. Game on. He was expecting that that was a break of throw, but it wasn't. It was only a hold. Never look a gift horse in the mouth, Chris. Who did you have as favourite coming into tonight? Did you think that Conan was the favourite? Yeah, I, I did have Conan 134. as the favourite. Um, yeah, but his, I mean, his scoring is great, as we're seeing, but his, his shots at the double here are just not 58. like him. So maybe it's a bit of nerves. I didn't really think the nerves would get to him, to be honest. Obviously, I was wrong. One thing about Conan that we touched on a little bit earlier was his prolific 96. nature on Saturday nights. He took a break 
from the game for about six to seven months earlier this year. He openly said he'd fallen out of love with the game. And one of his first tournaments back after rediscovering a bit of vigor, he came to us and won on a Saturday night. Consequently, he beat Josh Payne that night in the final. That might be a moment. But if you tally up the amount of Saturday night wins that all of these players have had over the last couple of years, Conan has got the most at 135. Four. Next best is Josh Payne on three. So is that a Norman? Chris looking to leave tops. 47. But can only trim Coming it down to 90. 127. Still needing a treble for the ball. It's another shot at a double. The and he finds the smaller one. The Maybe that's all he needed was to have left himself bullseye in the last two legs. Such a weird game Fourth sometimes. Leg, it's to throw first. He can't find Gale. the double with eight attempts at something that's maybe four times the size. And then he gets what Chris Mason calls the button to oh, keep himself all, in the match. They're all the 96. same size, Paul. Just depends which way you want to look at it. Well, they're all looking at the middle portion when they go for the double. Just a question of whether you hit the middle. There's a bit more forgiveness with the outer ring. 128. But if there's one player tonight who's going to be really good on the treble 18s, it's going to be Conan Whitehead. That's, that's his area of the board, isn't it? Yeah, he's not really one there's so much switching down the bottom like you see a lot of other players. He doesn't tend to do that. He seems to stay up on the board um, a lot more. And he does that switch to the 18s, as you were just saying. He's very much a rub cross style of player because he likes to utilise the 18 segment a lot. He loves the double 18. I don't think he leaves it enough. 85. It's easy for me to say that sitting in this commentary booth, of course, but... I suppose that's a pretty good segue, actually, because Rob Cross won today on the PDC Pro Tour, so congratulations to Voltage. Could it be another 79. 18's merchant in Whitehead who gets glory going into Sunday morning? Still a very good technician, isn't he, Chris Mason? 100. Upright stance, beautiful right Coming angle with the white 154. arm. Conan Whitehead just sees a target and throws it really hard, doesn't he? 98. Chris should require 40. What's happening here? That's his first miss at a double. Game shot. But it doesn't last very long. Chris and Mason, Mason is now 3 1 up. There are people in this crowd who are thinking, are we going to be sitting here at around 1 o'clock in the morning game on. watching Chris Mason lift a trophy and getting his biggest ever paycheck in what was. One Maybe a career that was finished. But this game may just be starting again because that's our fourth maximum of this match. Three for Whitehead, one for Mace. This is darts, Paul. 83. Anything, absolutely anything is possible. It's all going to come down to that very last dart thrown at a double. 43. I spent many a time talking to Chris about when he was finishing his PDC career, and I was only just starting mine. We actually crossed paths for the 70. first time at the 2009 World Championship. That was his last one. That was my first. And we were in the same section of the draw. If he'd have 84. won his game against John McGowan and beaten Dennis Priestley after that, we would have met in the last 16. But it wasn't meant to be. Fifty-eight. It's going to make some book one day when Chris Mason writes it. That will be a bestseller. Oh, can you imagine? I'm just laughing at the thought of it, actually. All the other 60. anecdotal things that he would put in there. A book might not be enough. He might need a documentary series. It's that colourful of life he's had. 82. Is he going to require 130? This match, it's Whitehead who needs to find three straight legs and he doesn't need to go tops, tops. But he's gone that way anyway. 94. That's another double missed on the stat sheet. He gets no credit for that double top on approach. That's now nine missed doubles. 
Good standard here in this match. 85. Conan, you're required. Mid 90s is pretty good. Just goes to show how well Conan is scoring. Game I mean, shot on the fifth line. Conan Whitehead. Ten missed starts at a double. He could easily be averaging around 102. Sixth leg. It's Chris to throw first. Now this is the Game leg. On. Where Chris is thinking. Win this in 15. 15 should be enough based on the standard we've seen so far. Get the two points. 81. And then he would return in match four against Josh Payne. And if he was to get the win here and the win against Josh, he would top 45. group two and would be involved in the second semi final. We were talking earlier about how Mace has always said his first game is never his best game. I don't know what he's done overnight, 100. but he's definitely changed that because he is playing much better for his first game tonight than what he has the previous two nights. I spent a couple of hours with Chris this afternoon because we're sharing the same accommodation. And if you wanted proof that he's a bit of a dartaholic, he was watching PDC action from Barnsley today. Sandwich between lots of playing and commentary sessions he's done this week over the and over the last couple of weeks, actually. He just can't get enough of this game. 140. Great, great approach from Whitehead, but it is six starts from 200 to get two points. Now, winning by four legs to two is no guarantee that he will 100. make the semi-finals, but it will give him a very big leg up in group number two. Yeah, 100. every leg is important. Chris, you require Absolutely 100. Leg, especially when you're doing this round-robin kind of format um, and, and everything is um, is crucial. 20. Missed the shot. Coming two double tops. 76. Sixty. Chris should require 80. Chris needs 20 in tops. It's double top for the win. 60. And he misses it. Conan, you require 16. They bring himself Game back into the match the and he does so. Conan Whitehead. It's just thrilling this game. And we are down to a one-leg shootout to see who gets the first two points of Group so 2. Final leg, it's Conan to throw first. Game on. One hundred. Thirty-four. One hundred and forty. There are a lot of nerves right now in this audience, and there are some in this commentary box as well. As Chris Mason missed his chance. One hundred and twenty-five. Whitehead is a master at coming through the challenges here on this stage. What are your thoughts right now, Corinne? 125. To to go down to a last leg decider, particularly after those first two legs with Conan's many missed starts at a double and, and Mace was there right behind him to swoop in and take his opportunities, which is what you need to do. But I am pleased that it Conan, has gone to a last 136. leg. Although Mace probably isn't thinking that at the moment because Conan's come roaring out the blocks again, as he can do. But still, 60. it's all going to be down to that double, which we have seen. Conan's attempts at doubles in this match have not been great. I think Mace has got to get the 1-2-1 one, here. He must get another treble 20. Oh, and he's left himself on a bogey Conan number. He knew 76. it as soon as it left his hand. And that gives Whitehead six from here. Double top to steal the win. Game. And it's Shots. a win he does take out of the pocket of Mace the ace. It should have been two points to Mace. It's not, but it is a narrow defeat. He's still in group number two.
but he's now going to need to win against Josh Payne, probably by a distance. It was a great match. 95.44 for the winner, Conan Whitehead. And the fourth favorite coming into tonight, miraculously, does get the win. That 127 checkout was the highlight. 4-3, what a game. And what a game we got coming up with Pilgrim against Evans back into Group 1 after this. And so it was a comeback victory for Conan Whitehead as he takes the first spoils in Group 2 with a 4-3 victory against Chris Mason. And he did it with a 95.44 average. Mace averaging in the mid-90s for the most part of that game. But that 1-2-7 finish may well have been a game changer. And so for Mace the ace, he has it all to do in his final group game against Josh Payne in a couple of matches' time. Conan Whitehead is one victory away from the semi-finals here at the Super Series. And so we return into Group 1. Daryl Pilgrim's the one player we haven't seen so far in this particular group. He's going to take on Lee Evans in our third match of the evening. And Phil Bars caught up with the Flying Eagle earlier on this evening. Daryl, Group B, so good on Thursday. But then yesterday, it all got a little bit too nervous and a bit too close for comfort for you, didn't it? Yeah, just a bit in the end. I mean, I started off playing all right, just didn't get the results. But then, it, then I started thinking about it towards the end, and luckily, did enough. 
is it hard as well when you have such a perfect Thursday because you know going to bed that you've got one foot in finals night, isn't it? And it's easy to switch off for anyone in any sport in that situation. Yeah, it can, but um, the week to qualify I won all four on the Thursday as well. So I went in with the same mindset. I knew nothing was done. I knew I was in a good place, but I knew nothing was done. And so Pilgrim takes on Lee Evans, who needs a win to stay in the race to win the £20,000 and the Moda Super Series title. It's our middle match in Group 1. Let's get the action underway. Your commentary team is Corinne Hammond and Paul Nicholson. But first, let's hand over to our MC for the evening, Charlie Corsafin. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Modus Super Series. It's finals night here at the Modus Live Lounge in Portsmouth. And now would you please welcome to the stage our players. Firstly, it's Evs, Lee Evans. And please welcome the Flying Eagle, Daryl Pilgrim. Hello and welcome back to group number one. It's now or never for Lee Evans. He lost in the first game of the night by four legs to two. His 79 average in that first game of the night will have to be improved on. He's going to take out Mr. P, Daryl Pilgrim, who has been playing with us for over a year. He's had some success. He's got one weekly win, but it wasn't here. 34-year-old from Kempsford, 22-gram dart and a Challenge Tour event winner, playing a lot of PDC Pro Tour darts this year. But Daryl Pilgrim, a man who we made a lot of fun of earlier in 2022 because he was top of the PDC Thank you, averages. ladies and gentlemen. First leg, it's Lee to throw first. Game because on. Because he played one game, he averaged 99 and lost, and he was at the top of the tree for most of the season. But now he wants to be top of the tree at the end of the night, current. Yes, he absolutely does. As do the other five players. So he's got quite a job ahead of him if he's going to be the one that's lifting that trophy at the end of the night. Do you know why Daryl Pilgrim 44. has a lot of red and blue going on? Well, I learned this from Henry last night. It's because he's a Crystal Palace fan. Correct. And over the last 12 months, 43. he's been somewhat cagey about it with some of his dark shirts but now he's gone full eagle tonight with these colors he couldn't possibly be a fan of anybody 137. else but i'm pretty sure that he's got plenty of fans as well every time i seem to be looking at local open results daryl pilgrim seems to be winning them he is a very prolific local open winner and he will be hoping to do better than Crystal Palace today because the game, they got absolutely thumped by Everton. Three goals to nil. So over to you, Daryl. It's up to you to cheer yourself up. I'm sure he's put those thoughts aside. And isn't, isn't thinking about that right now and saying he's not going to be like his team. He's going to come out a winner. That's what you need to do. But full credit 57. goes to Lee Evans. Lee, you require 82. Who is hanging on to his place in this finals night by the skin of his teeth. That doesn't help, but he can feel better. If he can leave himself on a double here after dart three with Pilgrim back on 220. 32. Not the end of the world, but he was hoping to take the leg in 15 darts. If not, leave himself on a double. He's still got to approach it. Who knows, maybe he's going to go for the ball with his first start. We did see Conan do that last night. Lee, you require we have 50. seen Chris Mason get a 10 darter on the ball. But now's not the time. Now's the time to start finding this double, which was real trouble game in his first, first game. But he's got an assist Lee right Evans. there. In off the post. And Evans takes the lead by one leg to nil. 
Second leg, it's Darrell to throw first. Game on. Pilgrim is here because he was second in Group B over the last couple of nights. And predominantly over the last 12 months, we've seen specialists who play during the day and some people who are more used to playing at night. Pilgrim, for me, is definitely a night player. After Thursday night, I would have absolutely agreed with you. He was the standout player of Group B on that first evening session. But coming into the session last night, where he knew that he only needed to have that one game to guarantee his qualification, it all started to go wrong with losing the first game, then losing his second game, and then I'm sure he started to obviously get a bit nervy. And as it turned out, he didn't even need 96. to win that game because Conan winning his game and, and uh, last game when he'd already qualified actually guaranteed uh, Daryl to be able to get through to tonight's finals. Just to emphasise that point, a little bit earlier four. in the qualifying campaign, we had a player called Scott Walters, who, funnily enough, is in the crowd tonight. He won five consecutive games in a Group C campaign earlier in qualification, and then lost Darryl all five the next day and did not get through to the finals. Perfect days don't mean success in qualifying, but perfect days on Saturdays always mean success. 51. That's what they're looking for tonight, isn't it? Four games, four wins, job done. Yeah, exactly. Well, And you heard it on uh, Conan's interview that he had before his first game. He, he said, I just need to... Win two games, get through, get to the semis. Two more games, done. I win. One hundred and thirty-seven. Kind of approach that you really need Darren to take. require fifty-one. Well, the approach that Pilgrim needs is that right there. Game shot. And that the finish right there for a fourteen dollar. Gets himself in the game. It's interesting looking Third at the leg, mannerisms of all of the first. different players, isn't it? Game what on. do they do when they're approaching the hockey? What do they do when a leg is completed? We've seen a lot of the hand rubbing and hand blowing from Evs. And as far as Daryl Pilgrim is concerned, there's a bit of neck twisting there and a bit of shaking of that throwing arm. And last 85. night, funnily enough, whenever he hit a 180, he, he was doing this hand gesture like it, it was, you know, Hedry was going, it was kind of like he was saying, what, I didn't expect to get it. Whereas I was thinking, he was saying, why couldn't I have done that every shot? It's like he's surprised that he's not hitting the 180 every shot. And when he does get it, he's like, yeah, that's how easy it is. Why, why aren't I doing it all the time? But you are right. The mannerisms easy that one. players display um, is quite interesting to watch. But it's also interesting when they're your opponent. Not so much being able to see, but you can hear the huffs and puffs and whatever. And if you're Holy playing six. against someone who's doing those things or you see them shaking their head when they're going to the board, you kind of think to yourself, yeah, I've got you because you're playing against yourself here because you're not happy with what you're doing, all I need to do is keep my game under control, and I'm going to win this. Yeah, well said. Darts is a bit of a chess match when it comes to the psychology of it. But on top of the psychology, you've got to have the execution as well. As far as 97. finding 180s, like Corinne mentioned, the second most likely player tonight is Graham Usher, but he didn't deliver a great deal in the maximum department. The third most likely player to hit a maximum per leg is Daryl Pilgrim. He's got 11 for the week so far from eight matches played. That's not a bad ratio. I thought he was going to deliver one right on cue there, but it's not going to happen. He'll have to settle. For a second 140-plus score of this match. He is going to get a look at a big 100. finish. Darryl to break the throw here in leg three. Best effort of the week, 110. It might be usurped. 120. But not just yet. Lee required 96. Will he be back for the 40, or is Lee going to take this 96 out now to give himself a 2-1 lead? Ideally, he wants the 60 for double 18, but it might be double 18 for tops. Was that a bit defensive? 56. He might be in trouble Darren now. Required 40. I often don't get that. I mean, for me personally, I think it's hard enough to hit one double. I'm not going to try and go double double. Game shot on the third. Oh, that's a beautiful dart from Daryl Pilgrim. And I'd love to get your insight on that one, Corinne, because 
if I was delivering my darts the same way as Daryl, where I can sneak them Both underneath, and I know that's the way that you like to bunch Game your on. darts together. Are you still going for the central part of that double 20, or are you going for the marker? No, I, personally, I'm still going for the marker because when you're you're aiming for that barrel or, or aiming to go run out, I mean, there's lots of things that can go wrong. You can clip the flight, things go everywhere. Um, and, you know, we have seen that happen quite a few times 60. in the last couple of days where they have gone for that barrel and, and just hit the wrong part of the flight instead and delivered some wayward darts. He has been Mr. Consistency when he's been with us, Daryl Pilgrim. Since making his debut, he has been to six different Saturday nights. Some of the most prolific 93. Super Series players over the last 18 months are here tonight. But this is the first time that Daryl has played in front of a live audience for a Motor Super Series or Lively uh, final. Yes, it is. Well said, because when he won in week four, that was in Southampton, and a somewhat fortuitous win as well. He had to survive match darts from Josh Payne that night. He got through. He's had to wait quite a few weeks to come back. And, of course, there was no crowd in qualifying the last couple of days, so you're right. This is the first time, and what a crowd it is. Yeah, well, for him coming into Group B on Thursday, he was the only one who hadn't played in the venue before. So it was his 100. first time playing in here uh, when he came and started that campaign in Group B on Thursday night. He's not doing a bad job of it right now. He's putting Lee Evans to the sword, and the body language of Evans right now is not telling a very happy story. If Pilgrim does find this double 10, it 93. may just be you require a matter of 20. time before Evans is the first person eliminated from this finals night. Double five. Game shot on the fourth leg. Very, very Darryl good. Pilgrim. As I say, Paul, no one misses fives. Except me. I miss them a lot. I'm not a a person who dislikes double Fifth five. It's one of the best first. ones in my career. Game on. How do you remember things like that? I don't know. No. I don't know. Well, Pilgrim 3-1 up. A man who... 96. Just knows how to get himself to the latter stages of a Saturday night. But his first time in front of the audience is proving not to be that daunting at all. 100. Not phasing him in the slightest. That animation on the back of that shirt looks a bit intimidating, doesn't it? Almost looks like Carlos the Jackal. 58. I have a feeling that might have been a wrestling reference there. He is being ruthless right here. Whoa, and there he is in the maximum crazy. column, finally. That's his first of the match. I reckon that'll be the first of quite a few tonight. I would be really surprised if it's not. 221 points away. 100. From doing two things. One, eliminating Lee Evans. Two, guaranteeing his passage to the semis. And a bonus to that is that Graham Usher would be safe as well. And that would mean that match five tonight between Pilgrim and Usher would purely be a playoff 42. to see who tops Darryl the group. 96. He's got time. Sensible. Didn't go double-double, didn't need to, lines up tops. This is an excellent performance. Yeah, what, watching his games over the last couple of days, he definitely has a preference for tops than what, um, you know, he would any other double. In the background, you see Pilgrim with that ghost dart, that practice shot. He does it a lot. 45. He only Darryl needs one more dart 40. to be through. With a game to spare. Game. He's Shot. through. And Evans, Evans is gone. That's group one done. But we don't know who's going to win the group. And who is going to come second. But Mr. P could be Mr. W by the end of the night. Especially if he keeps throwing darts like that. That's a great average. And the doubles weren't too bad either.
It's so long to Lee Evans for now. A great campaign for him, but he is the first person eliminated from this finals night. Unfortunately, he just didn't get out of the blocks. As far as Group 2 is concerned, we will see Chris Mason in the same position as Evans going into his second match. He's going to be up against Josh Payne, who was the last person to make their debut here on Saturday night. So it's Mason against Payne after this. Joy for Darrell Pilgrim, disappointment for Lee Evans as he is the first player eliminated from Champions Night here at the Modus Super Series as Darrell Pilgrim got his campaign off to the perfect start. A 4-1 victory against Evs, which means Group 1 will see Darrell Pilgrim and Graham Usher progress. They'll jostle for position in Game 5. In this game, a 95.76 average for Pilgrim, 4 out of 9 on the doubles. He is playing to type this week. He has played around that 95 average throughout the course of the the last three days if he continues to do so he is going to be a serious threat to winning the super series title well we now move into the middle match of group two it's a game that chris mason has to win to keep his hopes of qualification alive he takes on josh payne and early on this evening our colleague phil bars caught up with the maximum you got a second chance when scott williams decided to go to the pro tour in the build-up were you aware that you were the next best runner-up no not at all no to be fair I didn't think I'd get a call-up, to be honest, because I, I personally wouldn't have taken 
the uh, call uh, uh, the Pro Tour call up, but you know um, this is quite big now. Um, I'm looking forward to playing. We've seen you do some brilliant things here. Where is the the game right now? Is it consistency the key tonight as well? Yeah, uh, take my chances. When I you know I'm making a lot of chances for myself and sometimes not taking them. And that it's going to be crucial tonight, so I've got to uh, be on my game. Are you a believer in fate? Because sometimes things are, are written in the stars. You weren't meant to be here. Then you were. You come out your group. Mm. Now you're in finals. Now are you, are you a believer in fate? Well, I said in an interview a couple of days ago, I felt like I should have been here anyway. I was a bit, you know, missed a few darts to get through a couple, but it's my own doing. Uh, but yeah, I take it as um, a little uh, token of good gesture. <laughs> Well, Josh Payne is looking to become the Denmark of darts, not originally qualified as a group winner. He's making the most of his second opportunity here at the Super Series. He takes on Chris Mason, who's been the story of the competition so far. Let's get the players on the stage. Your commentary team is Kareen Hammond and Paul Nicholson. Your MC is Charlie Corsafine. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Modus Super Series. It's finals night here at the Modus Live Lounge in Portsmouth. And now would you please welcome to the stage our players. Firstly, it's Mace the Ace, Chris Mason. And please welcome the maximum, Josh Payne. Just a matter of two weeks ago, we all got the news that Chris Mason was going to play. We were all excited at the prospect. I wonder if anybody thought that he would be in this scenario now, but we do know before he takes on Josh Payne in his first game of the night, that if the 52 year old from Bristol wins by four legs to two in this match, he will make the semi-finals. Whenever you have played your two matches and have two points and a positive leg difference, thank you, you ladies will and gentlemen. First qualify. leg, it's Chris to throw first. That is what Game Chris on. needs to do. But if he does win by four legs to three, he'll have to wait and see what happens between Payne and Whitehead. <laughs> you never know. He might have to go through 100. another nine-dot shootout. Yeah, you know, nothing is impossible. <laughs> I, it really wouldn't surprise me to have a nine dart shootout tonight, actually. And obviously now we can o we know that it can only happen in this group, 100. having already seen that Lee Evans has been uh, disqualified from disqualified, eliminated. <laughs> disqualified. Yeah, he did the wrong thing. Disqualified. No, eliminated from group 45. one. 45. Well, Josh Payne is someone I labelled as Mr. Saturday Night earlier this year because he he's got has a bit of Saturday night fever. Oh Not quite. I don't want to see him in a, a flared white suit and a black shirt. And I no John DeFolder? I definitely don't want to see him with darker hair and it's slicked back. Although he does have a very good quiff. But I call him Mr. Saturday Night because he never fails to make Saturday Night. Whenever he comes to us during the week, he's always here on Saturday Night as well. One hundred and fifty. His record is ridiculous this is his 10th saturday night this year and how many of those has he won he has won three and he hasn't won one in a while 100 He's lost in a couple of finals in trying to qualify for this but of course what was mentioned there by our colleague phil bars with josh is that because scott williams was unable to play 140 the next best Christian player in the was jp the lucky loser. Is he going to be lucky right now? Unfortunately for Mace, he has missed an 18, which would have given him a shot at the ball. Yeah, you wondered there, was he going the 54 82. to leave himself double Joshua seven, or was he actually going the big fat 18? Fat 18. Personally, I would have gone big fat 18 to guarantee yourself, guarantee yourself a dart at a double. Dart a double for Josh. 72. Grossly under delivered. Pressure required 40. Mason does come in for the first leg. Double 10. 
Game shot on the first Very line. well pitched for Chris a 17-dart start. Somewhat fortunate to get that shot, but he took it with both hands. Second leg, it's Josh to throw first. Game on. A bit of a clash of generations, you could say. Mason 57. playing his trade at his best in the late 90s and early noughties. Whereas Josh Payne, a winner of PDC titles. 100. He doesn't beat bad players in those finals. One was against James Wade. The other against Peter Wright, the current world champion. And current world number one. 134. But his career has deviated over the last 12 months. Losing his tour card may have been a blessing because this year he has been one of the best players in all of the Super Series action. 140. And he was pretty useful over the last couple of days, wasn't he, in Group C? Yeah, absolutely. And and that's what I keep saying about this Motor Super Series. It, it affords such an opportunity to players, um, you know, those that don't have their tour card. And that's why you have to wonder, is it something that they actually want to go back and, and do again? Or, or are they happy for the next, you know, year or so, continuing 57. to be able to do things like this? That is a fascinating question, which I'm sure every player who is playing tonight is going to answer at some point, whether it's with Henry Deacon at the end of the night on a podcast and some sort of other interview basis. One thing we do know, and I do know from speaking to Chris personally, is that 80. no matter what happens tonight, Josh, he's happy 83. with his lifestyle, being a commentator, being really healthy, and going back to the tour for him is not an option. The ball is an option. 52. And now, 124 for British a 2 0 lead, which will feel extremely familiar to Mace, who had a 2 0 lead against Conan Whitehead earlier. Bullseye for him. 99. Doesn't quite bank it. Joshua required 31. Where would you go for 31, Corinne? 15. Game shot on the second one. 18 dot repost there from JP. Interesting mannerisms there from Third Josh Payne. Third leg, it's Chris to throw first. Game on. And the word rubbish mouthed there by the young man who currently dwells in Ashford, not far from the train line that takes you to continental Europe, of course. 134. The famous Eurostar train. He moved to Ashford. In the last couple of years, with his other half, Sally. 140. And he did change darts manufacturers as well over that period. And I think it's a change that has suited him because he always had this problem with his darts kinking to his right. And it used to drive him crazy. But since he got these new darts, I believe his game has gone up a notch. Do you think that's down to the darts? Or do you five. think that it's him thinking that these darts are going to be better and therefore they are? It could well be a, a mix of both of those things. I think, uh, personally, I think that's what it 100. is. 100. Obviously, you have a preference to the style of darts that you like. But when people keep going to change them all the time, I think that's more about satisfying their own mind that they need to change them more than actually needing 96. to change them. 96. Well, Chris was saying to me a little bit earlier that throughout the early part of his career, he was reliant on a very trusty set of Eric Bristow darts that I believe 41. he still owns. But these ones were fresh out of the packet darts. They had no emotional scarring. Maybe that has helped him over the last couple of weeks. 140. And that's a good lead Chris from Josh. 142. Is it going to be the biggest out of the night? No, it's not. Now, there are players 60. who would look Josh for two double tops here, 80. but that's not how Josh Payne rules. He just needs one. Game and that is a break of throw. Josh Payne. Now, if Chris Mason wants to qualify automatically 
after this match. He will need to win three straight Four legs. Gets Josh to throw first. But if he loses two Game more, on. the fairy tale is over. Maybe his biggest problem right now is that Josh Payne is a prolific 180 scorer. He's averaging one 180 per match this week, which for him is a bit of a drop. 58. Well, he's yet to hit one in this match so far, so maybe we're about to see that coming. Did you just forecast that? Wow! I absolutely did. Have you got the lottery numbers? <laughs> oh, I wish. I think the lottery's already been drawn. It's 11.30 local time. 99. And a bit of a wry smile there from Mace. Maybe the clock is ticking on stage one for Mace the Ace. 55. I just wonder if this result would be different right here had he hit that double top against Conan Whitehead, which would have given him a vital win. But it's starting to slip away. 28. Josh will require Josh 126. Has got multiple visits here, possibly even three visits. Take care of this 126. 56. And we don't have 15 reds and six different colours in a cue ball, but. He just sensed that Chris needs snookers now. 100. Joshua requires 70. Josh spends a lot of time trying to leave tops these days. That's exactly what he's done once again. 50. And to have any chance in this leg, you feel it's got to be a max for Mace. Yeah, absolutely. Is he going to? Yes, he is. So you've just called that one. I've called one, you've called one. Joshua requires Well, what's going to happen here? I'm going to say that Josh is going to hit this. Maybe I'm wrong. 15. I was very wrong. That Chris was the commentator's 36. curse. I'm saying nothing. Game shot. And it's probably a good thing I did. Chris Mason. Because now, Mace has got his own destiny back in his hands. He was so focused right there, he did not know leg, it's who Chris was throwing throw first, first in leg five. The good news, Chris, is that it's you. If you were in Chris's shoes right now, 100. would you want to know what you need to do to qualify, or would you just want to play? I just want to play. But I have no 96. doubt that Chris knows exactly what he needs to do and that would come from all of his weeks on end that he spent in this commentary box talking about the exact same things and the results that would happen so whether he wanted to know or not he knows i get the feeling that mace just wants to win the match and then see where the chips fall i'm sure at some portion of his mind he knows that 4-2 will get it done but the 4-3 win would mean that he would have to wait to see what happens in game six. But this is a great One recovery from Mason. Maybe he is hoping for it to be a 4-3 win his way. So then we've had two 4-3 matches. He's hoping, hoping Josh goes 4-3 so he can get himself involved in a nine-dart shootout. He said a little bit earlier that if he was involved in another nine dart shootout, his elbow couldn't take it. It's only nine darts, Eight mate. Six. You could take it. That was a bad last start. He was going for the 13 there. I leave himself on double 16. So instead of having three clean darts at a double, he now has to clean up the approach with pain for one, 39. maxing the pressure. It's double 10. Game and it's there, the and I'm not even Chris sure he was going for the 19. I was just about to say the same thing. Do you think he was going for the 19? I mean, he has been great on Sixth double leg. 10 it's so Josh far, the throw but first. you'd Game like on. to think that that was actually for a 7, because 7 double 16 is a lot 
easier, simpler shot, as in not simple to be able to get it. 140. No Absolutely. If you were having a bit of a punt this evening on these two delivering more than two and a half 180s in this match, you have won. There are three now in what has been a very, very good game. There are the averages and the confirmation of the three maximums. 41. Just remember, if you are having a punt this evening, late on Saturday night, it's for over 18s only. BeGambleAware.org for more information and please gamble responsibly. 96. But this is an enormous leg for Mace the Ace. He wins it. He will be in the semi-finals. And all of the pressure would then go to Payne 95. and to Whitehead, who was sitting in the practice room after quite a sizable break. Only time will tell if that break has served Conan well or not. I mean, 58. he's had, what, two, uh, three, four matches in between before his next one. Whereas, as and the same for Graham Usher. He's, he's had the same thing as well. Whereas the other players have had game, break, game. One oh, that's a fourth maximum of the match. And that's exactly what Mason did not want to hear from our referee, Charlie Corstafi. Uh, you can see the wry smile on his face there. 120. He may have put himself through the mill a bit Joshua requires over the last 45. couple of weeks, but he's having fun up there. Payne's not liking that dart at all. A reparation job required. And it's double four. Game shot. That's the very well play. done. Josh that Perry. now means that Mason cannot qualify automatically by winning this so leg. The final leg. It's Chris. But what we do first. know Game is on. that if Chris loses this leg, then he he's out. Qualify. After everything he's been through over the last couple of weeks on this stage and on approach to it, he put in so many hours. It's now one leg to possibly qualify, lose it, and it's over for now. 100. If I remember rightly from what my colleague of the last few days, Henry, was telling me, the stats, because he loves the stats, the stats on Mace winning a last leg decider 46. where he has the throw is pretty good. Don't ask me what the percentage is, because I couldn't tell you that. It had gone over my head by that stage. But I do remember that part of it. 58. If Henry said it, I believe it. We all pay homage to our colleague Mark Walker, who gives us all of our statistics and follows and logs every 100. single dart thrown. Everybody who has contributed to this project over the last 13 weeks. Everyone's done an incredible job. The commentators, the players, the backroom staff, the referees, the bar staff. The bar staff are very important. I say that because that's been me for about the last 134. Weeks. You've been promoted. <laughs> but is Chris Mason going to promote himself? Is it 82? 100. It's 122. It's a little harder. It's up to Chris to leave tops and hope that he comes back. 60. Joshua well, requires 80 that he missed to win his first game. Does he get a shot? Yes, he oh. does. Yeah, single numbers. Single numbers do it every single time. 42. All he needed was that Christian require single 80. 18 that would have still left him the opportunity with the 54 ball. It's 20 for tops. And he's missed a 20. That was a 40. commentator's curse talking about single numbers. Wow. Joshua require 80. Did not see that one in the playbook. He is dejected at the back of the stage and his exit door may be opened. If double five is found, Game and shot. it is, and the match, Josh Perry yes, has done an incredible job over the last couple of weeks, but his journey ends right here at the hands of the pre-tournament favourite Josh Payne, who averages 92.7, an excellent performance on the maximums by both players.
But unfortunately for Chris Mason, the journey is over. The journey is only starting for Josh Payne because he's going to qualify through group number two alongside Conan Whitehead. And they will have a playoff to see who wins the group in game number six. Same situation in group one. It's a playoff next between Pilgrim and Usher to see who wins that group. And so Josh Payne has ended Chris Mason's fairy tale run here at the Modus Super Series. And what a run it was. It ends there, though, unfortunately, for Macy H. Josh Payne sees himself through to the semi finals here at the Super Series. And he's chatting now with Phil Bars. Josh, congratulations. You've ended the Chris Mason fairy tale, but booked your place in the semi final of Champions Week. Just sum up how you think that went. Very, very nervy. <laughs> First game, we've all said it was come back there, bloody hell. Crowd's been really good out there, and uh, yeah, I don't really normally feel nerves that much, but I was, I knew what was in play. If I didn't beat him, it all gets a bit complicated, and you know, I, I beat him, and we're through, and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm happy. Go into the last game now, carefree, and is it important about taking that momentum into the semi-finals? No, I just want to play better. I mean, I'm practicing really well. You know, uh, I'm just going to treat every game as if I want to play really well and win. Um, just because we're through, it doesn't mean you don't want to win, does it? You know what I mean? This is Champions Week and I want to play my best and just try and uh, 
make things easier for me if I can, but it's not going to be easy, is it? Let's be honest. And how much of a difference did having a crowd to cheer you on there this evening make a difference? Yeah, yeah, no, uh, I love a crowd, so um, it wasn't bad at all. They're very respectful as well out there, so I liked it. Josh, congratulations, and we'll see you in a few games' time. Thank you. Cheers. So then Josh Payne through to the semi-finals here at the Super Series, as are the two players that are going to play in the final game of Group 1, Graham Usher up against Daryl Pilgrim. Usher is on an eight-game unbeaten run. He hasn't lost since Game 7 on Tuesday. He continued that following that 4-2 victory in the opening game of the night against Lee Evans. Meanwhile, for Daryl Pilgrim, he also got the better of Ed's in his group opener. This tops, sealing the victory against the man from Kensford. So, we know these two are through, but it's important to jostle for position because the player who wins will have the advantage of throw in the first semi-final. So, still plenty to play for. We're going to watch it in the company of our commentary team of Kareen Hammond and Paul Nicholson. But to get the boys on the stage, here's our MC, Charlie Corsafi. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Moda Super Series. It's finals night here at the Modus Live Lounge in Portsmouth. And now would you please welcome to the stage our players. Firstly, it's the Flying Eagle, Daryl Pilgrim. And please welcome the gambler, Graham Usher. Four games down for Saturday night here at the Mordus Live Lounge then. And I suppose the pressure's off a little bit for the next couple of matches. But like Henry Deacon just said, it's all about finding out who will have the advantage of throw in the semi-finals. So the winner of this game will top group one and have the darts in the first semi-final against the runner-up. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Group, first leg, which it's will be decided in first. game six between game Josh Payne and Conan Whitehead. So you can see early in this game, Corinne Hammond, that with the, that little smile from Daryl Pilgrim, maybe the pressure is off a little bit. But 58. what did you make of what Josh Payne just said to Phil Bars about having a better performance in your second game, carrying that through to the semis is very important. Yeah, absolutely it is. You you want to be able to improve on each game that you play. And now, knowing that his next game will be the one before he plays the semi-final, if he can improve on that one, then he's going to be confident that he can improve again in the semi-final. Now, these two have 60. not been on collision course this week because Graham Usher was in Group A. He then had Thursday and Friday off. But Daryl Pilgrim didn't come here until 99. Thursday. And there is a possibility, of course, that these two playing right now could 60. be in tonight's final. Darryl, you require because 164. they both win their semi-finals. They will have a second battle in the space of a couple of hours. Strong start from Pilgrim. 38 left after 12. This is a sign of what he can do. 60. Daryl, you require 38. Surely he's got to split this with such a big lead. No, obviously not. Now, oh, now he will. Game shot on the first well, he did both leg. Right, didn't he? Daryl Pilgrim. Went for it, split it, hit it. All good. And respect from his opponent. Second leg, it's Graham to throw first. Game on. Just such a great player to watch. I remember the first time I watched Graham Usher play it. He's from a beautiful town called Scarborough in the northeast of England. Apparently you get one of the best fish and chips in that town. Because they bring all of the fish freshly in from the North Sea. I don't know that from experience because I haven't had fish and chips from Scarborough. But back in 2019 when John O'Shea, one of our friends who is currently on the Pro Tour, won the World Masters. That's where I saw Graham Usher for the first time playing fast, effective darts. And since then, 
being a bit of a semi-pro mainstay. Well, I'm going to be completely honest 100. with you, Paul, and say that I have not seen him play before. I was busy at work in my day job, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, when they were playing. I mean, obviously, so I've seen clips 137. Of things, I've not actually seen him play. So this is my first time. What are your impressions of how, yeah. how he 100. plays? 100. Yeah, I'm Darryl impressed. Require 109. I, mean, I was already impressed without having seen him play because obviously this is Champions Week. So he's won a, a week to be able to get here. He's qualified for the finals the night, second so that is impressive. Darryl Pilgrim. Um, yeah, but actually being able to watch him in action, yeah, he, he is quality. So and is that. I, I was just about to say Third the same thing. So is Darryl Pilgrim. Game on. That is quality. Oh, a couple of legs in, and I don't usually like to do this. 100. But his average has just come down <laughs> to 110. This is something that Daryl can do. 83. He has got a very high ceiling of performance. But too often, in my opinion, when he's been with us, has he been the bridesmaid? It became a bit of a running joke on social media. And interestingly enough, when he got that week four win against Josh Payne, I was commentating that week, and I said he's not the bridesmaid anymore. And his partner got in touch 100. with me and said, yes, he's not the bridesmaid anymore. As if to emphasize that point, he could well be... 60. Daryl, you require 167. <laughs> Took the words maybe out of my mouth there. Not so much walking down the aisle to victory right now, but sprinting. One hundred and excellent stuff from Pilgrim. Do you think that having the pressure come off him, knowing that he's already qualified, is Darryl contributing to the 42. fact that he's playing so well now? Unquestionably. This is for a 14 daughter. 10. Graham, you require 180. Oh, could still be 3-0 because that treble five means that you can't take out 103 in two darts. 78. All he can do Darryl is what he just did right 32. there. Second bite of the cherry. Oh, no too many. Graham, you require 40. Happen, Game shot just on the third line. Graham Usher. It goes a bit high, the adrenaline maybe. It is a bit of a perilous double double eight, isn't it? Because you've got a bust shot Four either legs. side it's of it. To throw first. The Game single on. 16, the double 16, and the double 11 next to that double eight. 59. And going inside of the double eight puts you then over to the other side of the board on the double four. And, and I always think that double four is a very quick road to double one. I've never heard of like that before in all my time in the game, but it makes sense. But I was talking to Chris Mason this afternoon about infamous switches 96. within the doubling aspect of this game. And a lot is made of the switch from double 18 to double 9. But not a great deal is made of the switch from 97. double 8 to double 4, which to a lot of people is more difficult. Yeah, I would say so. Different heights, 60. opposite sides. Yeah, not, not a switch that I'm fond of myself, but... In saying that, I don't really like the right-hand side of the board. Actually, I tell a lie. I love every double I can hit. I don't care which one it is. If I hit it, 58. I love it. It's my new favourite. That is a great piece of psychology right there. I love every double that I hit. Perfectly said. 125. From might I add, the most rewarded female dart player in Southern Hemisphere history. She's not here by accident, you know. She's very successful. Nobody more Graham successful in the entire hemisphere than Corinne Hammond. Oh. oh. Game oh, shot on the oh, he's done it again. Graham Usher. He's just the man for the explosive finish. He's got a 170 this week, and now he's got a 161, and he's back in this match at 2 2. Fifth leg, it's Daryl to throw first. I love Game games on. like this. I love the drama. Do you love the Daryl Pilgrim haircut? Hmm. Let, me, let me get a look at it again. 
I think it resembles the Tommy Lee Jones character, Harvey Two-Face. 100. From that very famous Batman movie. From this angle, he looks all shaved. And on the other side, he's got lots of hair. But that's just me being a movie buff. 100. Great game. As you can see, there are the averages. If he had a beard, 100. I would have thought that he was trying to emulate Kenny Rogers. I'll take your word for that one. He was, let's not forget, not that far away. 98. From 3-0 up. It's now 2-2. Two -two. And Graham is charging. 100. Having that advantage of throw in the semi-finals could be massive. The format does not change in the semi-finals or the final tonight. It's still best of seven legs. 5-1. or one, 127. If it goes to 3-3, three, three, you want to throw first. 50. Darryl requires 76. Pilgrim has the darts in this match. Can he use them here in leg number five? Double top. 56. Another chance for Russia. Graham, you but require 151. It's 43. Darryl, you require 20. Two tens to take the lead. He's starting to miss doubles. No score. And by quite some margin. Graham, you require 108. Where's he going? Double top. Game He's only going to stone another one. Graham Usher. And if you look at his finishing in this match, it doesn't get any better than this. His scoring is a good 3% behind his Graham opponent. But it means Game nothing on. when you're hitting every double you're looking at. And doing it under 41. pressure as well when Daryl's already missed starts to end the leg. That, that shows some great resilience there. Well, that graphic that you see to the left of their names illustrates the brilliance of the finishing of Osha. But the nine misses from Daryl Pilgrim. 96. And I'm not over embellishing this point. This match should be over. Pilgrim should have won it by now. But it is all about eighty-five that winning double. There's so many games that are lost on the doubles. Yeah. 43. As the saying goes, it's uh, scores for show, doubles for dough. One missed double could change an entire career. Just think about Mike Gregory 58. in 1992 when he missed multiple match starts to win the 1992 world title. Had he won that, his career may 100. have taken a different trajectory. As it turns out, he was one of the best players that never won a world title. Pilgrim looking to get himself into the finishing zone. 60. And does, but only just. 60. I think Graham looks a bit more comfortable 26. in this game. Darryl Seems to be a bit more accustomed to the heat of the stage. He's not perspiring as much as he did earlier. Maybe not as nervous. This pace is a lot quicker, though, too, and you did say that he feels more comfortable in a quick game. So 134. It, it probably favours him somewhat. I think that's a brilliant point you've just made, Corinne. 171. Oh, and he just will not Darryl leave Pilgrim alone. 24. Don't miss this time, Darrell. I said don't miss. Game shot. And he doesn't play. miss. Darryl it's going to be a one-leg shootout to see who wins group number one. You like double three? Does anyone like double three? Seven There's the final leg. It's Darryl to throw I've first. Ever met Game on. Who likes double three? Richard Ashdown. Ah, it's his height though, isn't it? Actually, it's not even. It, one hundred above his head. He's still throwing up the board. I'll let you handle that text that you're just about <laughs> to receive. <laughs> I did actually see Richard Ashton hit it first dart once, and I thought, ah, that's why. True story. 
Now, is this a second maximum? 123. We had one maximum in this game coming from Pilgrim. Alongside that 91 60. average. It, it's strange because it feels like he hasn't played that well in this game, but it's still averaging 91. That's the sign of a very good player whose B game is above 90. 100. Yeah, and that's including all of those missed doubles that he's had as well. What's he had now? 11 missed darts at a double. Um, and while he's 83. had well, 15 ton pass throws and only three 140 plus, th and that's because he's very good at switching down to the 57. So we've seen a number of 134s that have come from him. 100. Oh, beautifully done from Pilgrim, who gets his fourth 140 plus score of this match. 60. Darren well, earlier on, he had double 19. He went for it first dot, then split it and hit it. See him again? Game oh, shot. No, it's not. And the match. But Daryl Pilgrim does win the one. He's going to play in the first semi final and he will take on the runner up of our next match. It was a very good contest with some definitive highlights. There you see Graham Rush did not miss a double, he just didn't get enough chances. And that 1 6 1 on the bullseye was the highlight of that match. Daryl Pilgrim undefeated tonight and is halfway to success. He's got a semi final in his future. Usher will play the winner of our next match, which will be the winner of group number two. It's Payne against Whitehead at Kent Derby coming up after the break.
Well, the Flying Eagle will be feeling glad all over as he's the man at the top of Group 1 for the conclusion of that particular group, a 4-3 victor against the gambler Graham Usher. Both players knew at the start of the game they were going to go through. It's Pilgrim who tops the pile, and he's chatting now with Phil Bartz. Daryl, you've topped Group 1, placed in the semi-finals. You must be delighted. Yeah, absolutely, over the moon. It's, um, that was the first aim get through the groups and then another group to get through step by step. Tune that up and he takes out that blockbuster 161. What, what are you thinking at that moment? Yeah, well, at this level, if someone's left on something, you almost expect them to take it no matter what the finish is. You kind of expect it. So if it happens, it happens. Two games away now for £20,000. Is it looming large in your mind yet? No, as I say, it's just every game step by step. I mean, obviously, it's going to be in the back of your mind, but if you think about it too much, it won't happen. Daryl, very best, and we'll see you in the semi-finals. Cheers. So we will see the Flying Eagle in the final four here at the Super Series. As we will see the final two gentlemen that will round off the pool stages. It's nice and simple here. Usually on a Saturday night, we'll be getting the abacus out, getting all the equations square. However, both of these gentlemen, Josh Payne and Conan Whitehead, are into the semi-finals of the Super Series. Conan Whitehead got this 1-2-7 against Chris Mason to turn the tide in that particular game. Mace leading by two legs to nil before Whitehead going on and sealing a 4-3 victory. Meanwhile, for Josh Payne, he also got the better of Chris Mason in a deciding leg, pinning this. Double 10 to secure the victory, or the double 5, should I say, to secure the victory against Mace the Ace. Similar scenario to Group 1. Both players are through. They are playing for position and the right to throw first in their respective semi-final. Kareen Hammond and Paul Nicholson are your commentary team. And to get the boys on the stage, here's Charlie Corsafine. Ladies and gentlemen... Welcome back to the Modus Super Series. It's finals night here at the Modus Live Lounge in Portsmouth. And now would you please welcome to the stage our players. Firstly, it's the maximum, Josh Payne. And please welcome the barbarian, Conan Whitehead. It's a Kent Derby that will finish our qualifying matches for the semi-finals. But having said that, they're both through already, but it's a question of who they will play come the final four. Chris Mason and Lee Evans already eliminated, but the 28-year-old from Ashford, formerly from Gravesend in the southeast of England, will now take on someone he knows extremely well. Conan, who has Thank been you, ladies and gentlemen. one of Kent's first best gets Josh to throw first. over the Game last on. 10 years. He's been hovering around the southeast scenes of local tournaments, bumming into Josh Payne a lot of the time. 43. This is not one of the biggest games they've ever played. But it's there is not. a possibility that later on might be, if they both make 56. the final. What's your prediction for this one, Corinne? Because with them both through, it's a really interesting mindset that they might have coming into this. 92. They've got to be thinking about if they, you know, when they're playing the runner-up of the other group, which is Graham 33. Usher. They, if they lose, they're playing Daryl. It's also about, are they going to be playing next game? Are they going to have a break before they get to play again? But I think really right now, all they're just thinking about is, let's hit some 180s and, and get this game underway. That is the right attitude to have, because particularly for Josh Payne, there are 44. some scores to settle. He missed out in week four in qualifying for this. He got here anyway. And a lot of people might be wondering why 
because he did not 140. win one of the 12 qualifying weeks. Why he's here? Well, Josh got his invitation back because he was the highest 45. overall weekly average of all of the 12 runners up at 90.58 for week four. That's why he's back. And he's taking the opportunity with both 59. hands. 59. That's what you have to do, though, Paul. The, the opportunity is presented to you. You need to grab it with both hands, and you need to take it. 100. I think it's Josh fascinating that Henry Deacon mentioned Denmark a little bit earlier on. The famous 1992 scenario when Yugoslavia were not able to play in the European Football Championship. 58. Denmark got the invite, and they went on to win the whole thing. Well, Josh Payne's nickname is not Denmark. It is The Maximum. He's looking for the maximum payout. Josh requires 74. But first, he's got to take care of Conan the Barbarian with 20 in tops. 34. Conan, you require 83. Conan's got plenty of support in the crowd. You might hear them if he hits the ball. 58. Not far away. Josh requires 40. Not close enough. Game shot on the first Ideal leg. shot there for Josh. Josh Payne. And 22 darts for that first leg. Mm. A somewhat different start to the beginning of game five where Pilgrim came Second out of the leg. blocks. Second leg, Conan to throw first. Yeah. Game on. And I mean, and it was only a, a hole to throw as well. So I think yeah, you, you kind of have to think, is it because there's no pressure on them? They know that they've qualified, so they're just kind of rolling the arm over. Or is it because it's still quite nervy in the fact that they want to be the top of the group? They want to have that advantage of throwing first 85. in their, you know, semi-final. I think you want to have that feeling of invincibility, that unbeaten streak. You do not want to go into the semi-finals on the back of a defeat. And under no circumstances are you going to see Conan relent. He doesn't know anything about the reverse 58. gear. He's all about moving forward. I'm not saying this just because he's a lot bigger than me. 58. And he's actually on your screen right now, but he is genuinely one of the players I love to watch because he gives everything he has every single time. And yeah. between these two players, they've won seven require weekly titles in the last year and a half. Seven. Fifty-five. So they know how to get it done on a Sunday morning because, let's face it, we are past the midnight hour now. It is Sunday morning, and you have to tune yourself 58. in to play Conan at this time of the morning. 68. You can't. You will lose. Yeah, well, Conan did have that problem on Thursday no score. night. Oh, that is... Mm. But he'll be back. Josh is back on 207, so... He is going to be afforded another opportunity off that 68, but is he going to pay the price for that missed double? 57. Conan, you require you 68. Not, with Josh not putting any pressure on him, but I get the feeling this double four is going to be higher. Game shot in the <laughs> second line. Perfect. Conan White. No damage done. Yeah, as I was alluding to Third leg, it's Thursday Josh to throw night, first. I did Game make on. reference to Conan saying that I think that he turned into a pumpkin after midnight because his first two matches of the evening were great. His second two weren't that great, but they happened to be after midnight. So I did say to him on the way out when we were going after Thursday night session, I said, yeah, I think you turned into a bit of a pumpkin. 12 o'clock hit. Yeah, it was all done 100. for you. It's always very brave to call a dart player a pumpkin. To be fair... Conan is not the one that I'd be worried about. His wife, Shira Lee, who's about you know, three foot four on a good day. She, yeah, out of the two of them, I'd be more scared about Shira Lee than what I would be Conan. And Conan's yeah. exactly the same. I absolutely agree. And I can get away with saying that, as can you, because she's not at home watching. She's actually in the crowd. <laughs> she's a lovely lady, but she is vociferously... 91. The number one support of Conan Whitehead, and she should be. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that we can't hear her. Not yet. No, not yet. 97. 
Josh, you require 130. Oh, I can see her in the background there, biting her nails. Nerves. I hope there's some nails left. 42. I might need them. Conan, you require 164. 161 is the biggest finish of the night. That could change. 139. And it almost did. Joshua Heads required and hands 88. in the crowd as Payne goes for the 2 1 lead on two little snowmen. Sixty. He can't find double fourteen. Conan, you require twenty five. Much closer than that, though. Nine. Same sort of margins for Conan. Joshua required twenty eight. Josh's darts are kinging to the right somewhat. If he misses this, he needs to miss it by half a centimeter, just like that. Double seven. 14. He's handing this leg to Conan. Conan, you require 16. Game shot on the third There it is. Leg. A 2-1 lead Conan for Conan. Whitehead. And a critical break of throw. Fourth leg, it's Conan to These throw players first. players have played so Game much on. in the way of Super Series darts this year. They're very accustomed to all of the different intricacies of playing this format. And yeah. If you are interested, these two have actually met in a final. 60. This year on a Saturday night. It was back in the time where we had phases. So it was four qualifying weeks and then a Champions Week. That's when things changed. To 12 qualifying weeks and a Champions Week, which we're in. But back in the fourth phase of this year, which was in the early part of the 100. summer. In week two, we had a night involving Kevin Painter, Daryl Pilgrim, funnily enough. Matthew Dennant, Dave Pallett, 60. who deserves an honourable mention because he had two runners-up finishes in qualifying for this. Then Josh Payne and Conan Whitehead fought in the final. 57. Conan's win in week two that got him a shot to Champions Week. And funnily enough, roles were reversed in the Champions Week that time because Conan did not make the semi-finals. Josh won. That's 56. Champions Week. They definitely know what to do when it comes to Saturday night. 100. Impeccably behaved, this crowd. Still wondering who's going to be lifting the silverware and taking home maybe a novelty check. And a very big bank transfer. We could see a break straight back here with 60. Josh playing back for that 100. Josh should require and as I say, 110. a break, not a break until you're able to hold. Never a true word spoken. Double 18. 92. Chance for Whitehead. Only require 124. For a two leg gap to consolidate what he did in the previous leg, but that treble five scuppers that chance. 52. Josh, you require 18. Straight for it. Game you shot the fourth leg. Josh Payne. The break is immediate. A somewhat disgruntled look on Josh Payne's face. Fifth leg, it's Josh to throw first. Game on. These two have been masters of the psychology of Super Series qualification over the last 12 weeks. Because even when Josh has not qualified through a group A scenario, he has vocally said to me, don't worry, I'll qualify. And even after 41. a really bad start to group B action a few weeks ago, in week eight of this stage, Conan White had said to me on the 100. Thursday night, I'm not going to do his accent because that would be disrespectful. Don't worry, mate. I will be there on Saturday night. And once more, I'm going 95. to win that Saturday night as well. And what did he do? He did just that. Oh, sounds like something Conan would say. But I think that speaks for the mentality of a lot of dart players. They do genuinely believe that they are the best and they are going to win every game that's put in front of them. These players have got to have a level of self-confidence which could be construed as Joshua arrogance. 124. 
it's definitely different between the men and women dart players because women don't tend to have that approach. 82. I think we're a lot more pragmatic, but I think that's women in general, really. We all don't think we're world champions. 121. Really Joshua required 42. We'll have to revisit at one point. Josh Payne's looking for a 3-2 lead. Don't give him a shot. 26. Because he's already hit Coming this this week. 144. Via the 18s. And look at that marker. Oh, and he calls himself. Whenever he does something he's displeased with, he says, Josh cool. requires 16. That should have been a second 54. I do exactly the same thing. It's always, oh, Corinne, why did you do that? Game show on the fifth oh, level. Did you know that Conan and I share a birthday? Maybe that's why we do it. You also share the same two letters for the first name. Sick player gets Conan to Is throw first. Is that a first. sign? Game on. That it could be Cole's night. If he loses one more leg in this contest, Conan Whitehead will 81. have to stay on the board and play at Daryl Pilgrim in semi-final number one. 99. Is that an advantage? Coming straight back onto the board, or would you l rather have that game break and play it against Graham Usher? I think considering 100. you'd be coming off a loss, then yes, you would want to have that break. You don't want to come off a loss and then get straight back up there. That That's how I would feel anyway. Because you would need to think about, right, I, I need to correct myself now. Now we're moving into the semi-finals. I need to get a win. 45. Um, yeah. Although Conan probably would just think, nah, let me straight back up there. I'm going to get up there and, I, and I'm going to win it. 140. Even though these players want to win every single match. There is a slightly different mentality. Microscopically. Between knowing you have to win and you can still afford the loss in this sixth 100. game of the night. Now, before we started this evening, I was on our broadcast network, Sporty Stuff TV, talking about some tips. My tip for this game was 51. more Conan than two and a half 80. 180s. We've got two of them. Game and we have a last leg player. shootout Conan to Martin. see if we can get a third. What did you say to me before this one started, Corinne? You said, this one's going to go seven, seven final legs. Leg. It's Josh you are right first. again. Game yes, I, I did say that. It will go seven legs. It's been the tail of the night because only two games 140. have failed to go the distance. The first game of the night, Evans against Usher, that was six legs. Pilgrim against Evans was only five. The rest of them are all going the distance. Money's worth so far on Saturday night and Sunday morning. I think these games deserve to be all seven legs, though. It is such a short format. Seven legs, when you when you think about you know what happens elsewhere outside of here, it, it's only that one. Well, if you an early break of throw, that, it can all be over. Um, so it's great that they are going that distance. Ninety-two. Good use of the 18s from JP. Just fails to get that 60 to leave the 170 to finish the match off. McConan's going to be in a better position. 140. Disappointment there that he didn't hit that 180. But he will be back for the 126. That's a one-two-six that he needs 100. to go for the bullseye Conan if he leaves it. 126. That's 57 is open. The shot is now closed. 58. Joshua require 110. Payne to win the group. Pick your double. Gets the single. 70. But doesn't Conan win it. Requires right 68. there. We know that Whitehead can hit a 68. Can he hit it this way? 52. They've both missed a shot for the match. 
Joshua required 40. To give himself a one game break. Double 10. Everybody loves Game. double five. Shots. And another and Josh Payne does as Josh well. Payne. He wins group two, and he will play against Graham Usher in the second semi final. The first one is going to be Daryl Pilgrim up against Conan Whitehead. You can see right there that his average was far superior to the person who won the match. What did you make of that, Corinne? Yeah, it was an interesting match there. It, do you know, I, I am actually surprised to see the difference in the averages there because it felt like it was an evenly matched game. Um, yeah, a few, missed, a few missed doubles here and there, but I mean, that, that's what wins you the games, isn't it? And the intensity will definitely ramp up when we come to the semi-finals after the break because it will be Conan Whitehead staying on the stage. He doesn't literally stay on the stage. He's going to go back to the practice room now, take his time, but when he comes back, he's going to take on the winner of Group 1, the undefeated Daryl Pilgrim, and then after that, we will have Josh Payne against Graham Musher. We'll take a short break now, but when we come back, it's semi-finals time here at the Motor Super Series at Champions Week Finals night.
Welcome back to the Moja Super Series where we have reached the semi-final stages here at the live lounge in Portsmouth and the asset Paul Nicholson has joined me up on the balcony to look back at our six group matches and when you look at the four semi-finalists over the games we've seen not much has really separated them have they? No I don't think so I think the most consistent player has been Daryl Pilgrim uh, he just always seems to deliver those uh, sort of B game low 90s averages, if not a little bit better than that. But I think Josh Payne, if he was to look at his statistics, he's undefeated tonight, but he hasn't really played that well. And some players have not qualified, obviously, in Evans and Mason, but I suppose the story of the qualifying matches for me is the fact that Chris could have qualified mm -hmm. and probably should have. I was going to say, Chris Mason must be feeling sick at the minute because he had every opportunity to qualify, was unlucky not to. And when you look at the stats, we've seen players progress through to the semi-finals with much worse stats than what he produced. Yeah, absolutely right. But I suppose when you think about Chris's story, it's been an incredible one. It did stop at this point, but I hope that maybe he gets a, another shot at it at some time in the future. But the one thing about this format on finals night is it emphasises that you have to get chances and take them immediately. Chris had his chances, he didn't get any more, he's out. Other people had more chances, they have taken them. But it, it's been a bit of a strange night so far, but I just get the feeling that the story has not been written. There's definitely something coming up. There's certainly some drama in the water, and that first semi-final is going to feature Daryl Pilgrim, who we saw progress through the group with a two-win from two record. He's going to take on Conan Whitehead, and this was a 109 against the gambler, Graham Usher, which helped him on his way towards victory, got him into a 2-0 lead and again we talk about this game being even on paper but this week and you look at the stats for this phase Dowell Pilgrim has been the standout performer Mr Consistency and on the back of his shirt it says Mr P should probably say Mr C for consistency because I've, I've commentated a lot on Daryl over the last 18 months and I've looked at a lot of his local tournament results as well he's just constantly at the thick end of things and the fact that he's only won one weekly title with us in the last year is a bit of an anomaly, really. He has found his way to a lot of Saturday nights. And the one title that he did win against Josh Payne in week four, that was somewhat fortuitous. So maybe he's saving his best stuff for the very end. He'll be hoping so anyway. Well, Dale Pilgrim calls himself Mr. P, but who's going to be Mr. W in that game? <laughs> Oh, I'm going to go for Pilgrim. I can't go against him right now. I think the only thing that really goes against him is what Corinne mentioned in commentary, is that sometimes when it comes to the very end and when the pressure does mount, he does tend to miss a couple of extra doubles. He might not have that luxury. Well, Paul, great to have your analysis there. And, of course, we're heading towards the end of stage one of this competition, but stage two is going to get underway on Monday. And this is how you can tune in to all of the action live, as always, on Sporty Stuff TV, Sky 437, FreeSat 250 and Freeview 264. But if you're watching us on YouTube, we're going to be exclusively live on the Modus Super Series YouTube channel. So please do give us a subscribe on there to tune in into all the action from around the world from Monday morning onwards. And of course, give us a follow on the rest of our social media feeds on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. It is at MSS Darts. Well, it is semi-final time here at the Super Series. One of four men are going to pick up the £20,000 top prize and call themselves the inaugural Modus Super Series champion. Without any further ado, let's get the action underway in the company of your commentary team. It's Corinne Hammond alongside Paul Nicholson. Your MC for all the darting drama to come is Charlie Corsafine. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome back to the Modus Super Series, where it's semi-final time, here at the Modus Live Lounge in Portsmouth. And now would you please welcome to the stage the first of our semi-finalists. Firstly, it's the Flying Eagle, Daryl Pilgrim. And please welcome the Barbarian, Conan Whitehead. <laughs> Thank you. 
A very warm welcome back to the Yellow Oki. And things are about to get very, very interesting. We've just had a couple of matches that were to decide the winner of the groups. The groups are done. Now it's proper darts. It's knockout darts. There are only three matches left tonight, two semi-finals and a final. And the money is about to ramp up like these guys have never seen before in their careers. This is what it was all about at the start of their qualifying for this night. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. First leg, it's Daryl to throw first. Game on. They wanted to have this chance to get a career best paycheck. Now, if Daryl Pilgrim wins this game, and indeed, 45. if Conan Whitehead wins this game, it will be just by making the final their career best paycheck. Because Conan Whitehead's best 100. came in making the quarterfinals of Lakeside a few years ago. And it would be his first five-figure paycheck because by making the final, you get £10,000 and still the opportunity to double that. If you lose at this stage, you will walk away with 3750 can't sneeze at that, can you, Paul? I've never been at the stage of my career where I could sneeze with that many notes. This is where you find out how good your focus is. You want to be able to play darts in a bubble and not think about the money. Think about what you're doing. Yeah, you need to approach it as it's just another game because if you start thinking about... If I win this, that means I can get to the final. If I win the final, I could walk away with £20,000. You just need to focus on what's in front of you. What was the most expensive game of darts you took part in? Was it the world final? I would have to say so, yes. I can say from my own experience, the most expensive game of darts I ever played in was worth £28,000. And I didn't think about the money once. You hope for these players' sakes that they're not thinking 92. about it either because it is a distraction. It's not so much a motivator right now. And Pilgrim, Mr. Consistency, 62. as we've been calling him, is at it again. A very 32. consistent start. Game shot on the first still leg. looks very Pilgrim. consistent. I just wonder if Mr. P, as he's known, on Second the back leg, of that shirt has got first. as many fans out there as Conan. I don't think he does. You could be right there because I know Conan definitely has a few friends out there in the crowd along with his wife, Shirley. And by winning his group, Daryl Pilgrim's got the darts. Protecting his position by holding leg one. And he has been winning local tournaments in preparation for this week. So he has that winning feeling. Now they may just be local events, 43. not on cameras, but winning is winning. It's keeping that positivity alive. Yeah, and it's ultimately match practice uh, because you can do all the 96. practice on the board that you want, really, but having that match practice is vital. It's a bit like having a football at your feet and you know that you're kicking it pretty well against the wall. But it's a bit different when there's somebody standing in your way. You can see what he's trying to do here from the 265 position. The 19s give you an easier route to a finish. Once again, he's just showed how good he is on those 57s. 100. Daryl, you require one. Take it a 1 3 2 this week from Chris Mason. 25, followed by 57 and Bull, coincidentally against Conan Whitehead. 92. Conan, you require 78. I sneakily suspect that Conan's going to have to hit this. Double top. There will be a reaction if this goes in. 58. Daryl, you require but there is no 40. reaction. Just fell short. Game shot on the second Darryl leg. does not fall Darryl short. Pilgrim. That's a 13-dart break of throw. And so far, so good for Pilgrim. 
And you can see why. His Don't average is over 20 first. better than his opponent. And he's not missing doubles either. Have a look at those. 85. He continues to do that. Someone is going to have to do something meteoric to stop him. I'd classify that as meteoric, but he's going to have to keep it going. One hundred. Such an interesting semi-final, this. Two rhythms that really complement each other. 140. As Whitehead misses dart six. Well, they've already played twice this week, playing in both Thursday and Friday, and they are one and one, if I remember rightly. Daryl won Thursday, Conan won yesterday. 100. Because they were last match of Thursday evening, first match of Friday evening. 170. Well, 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 what a leg from Cornyn. The that... only time he probably didn't want to hit the bullseye. Yeah, that's the only time you don't want to hit a 170. 43. Conan, you're All is good in the world 11. if you hit three and double four. Game shot. And there you have it. Conan that's how you get yourself back into a match. That's an 11 daughter. And a break straight back. And as I say, a break doesn't count. Unless Fourth you leg, it's hold. Conan to throw first. Game on. Yeah, just to confirm your point there, Corinne. It is one all in their head-to-head -head this week. They have played on one other occasion, which I mentioned in a previous match. Conan was on the same finals night back in phase four, week two. And Conan won that one by four legs to three. 59. And what was... A very good game, both averaging over 93. But their previous 100. meeting yesterday was even better. They both averaged over 96, with Whitehead winning that one by four legs to two. He'll yeah. be hoping that he can do that again. You just mentioned 100. in the last leg how Darrell was almost 20 points above Conan in averages, and now we can actually see that Conan's lifted his average to just shy of 100 and Dow's dropped down to 94. So it just goes to show it doesn't take much for it to, to do that 180. And it probably was the 180 from Conan that did it. Well, there you go, 180's in the air. Conan, you require 132. That 132 keeps cropping up, doesn't it? 104. And both times it's been left. It has resulted in a perfect approach. And this time, it's with Pilgrim on a bogey number. Incredible quality. Conan All of a sudden in this semi-final, the urgency Game is the there. Flag. And the double 14 Conan is also Whiteside. there for another 13 data in this semi-final. And we are back to an even game. Two Fifth all. leg, it's Daryl to throw first. I'm hazarding a very educated guess here. I've looked through Daryl Pilgrim's career, and I don't think he's ever played a game 100. for 6,250 pounds or more. This could be the biggest game of his life right now, whereas Conan has played a game for that amount of money before, which was his biggest game of his life. And they are playing like their life depends on it. But aren't we being treated to a great display of darts here now? 140. And the crowd know it too. Respectful, buoyant, when they want to be, and giving incredible order to these players. 60. Who deserve it, considering what's on the line. 100. He'd love another. 125. Well, even if that was a single 20, it would have made things so much easier. But the single five denies him a shot at what Daryl might even take right now. Bullseye! 80. If he'd have had one, two, one, it would have been two cracks at a treble. But here he's got to get two of them. There's one. 
There's another. 128. Oh, this game is so dramatic. Daryl, you require I'm, 41. I'm almost... Uh, oh, well, I am forgetting to speak because I'm just glued to the screen watching where the darts go. Double 16. Game shot Pilgrim the hits the front player. again. Darryl He's Pilgrim. now one leg away from the final. And Whitehead... Is one of those players when his back is against the wall, he Daniel. usually comes out swinging. He's going to need to now. He's at the point of no return. It needs to be two straight legs, otherwise he will be defeated in the semis. Well, this is why he is known as the Barbarian. Either that or he's just got really big forearms. One of the two. 81. Maybe both. <laughs> when you shake hands with Corn and Whitehead... Your hand stays shook. 56. Now we're about to find out how Pilgrim feels under pressure. I've already spoken a couple of times tonight about 59. how sometimes he just takes his foot off the pedal a little bit when things get a bit edgy. I remember something that 60. one of the leading players in world darts said about five years ago. Joe Cullen said he learned more about himself in a pro tour final with Daryl Gurney in a last leg shootout than at any point in his career. 60. And if you can do that, you can do anything in this game. These are the moments you find out what kind of player you are right now. So many mannerisms happening in the back of the stage there. The shirt is being tweaked. The arm is being exercised. There's water being drunk. I think it's because Daryl doesn't want to pay attention to what Conan's doing. That's why he's distracting himself to not watch. He's doing a lot of things because his focus is all over the place. 96. You know what Bruce Lee once said? One of the most profound pieces of philosophy ever mentioned. Standing still and doing nothing are two very different things. Right now, Daryl Pilgrim can't stand still. One of the worst things in playing in a stage match is that you absolutely cannot avoid what the, your, your opponent is doing. And that's because you've got a referee on the stage that's calling out the scores. You can not watch all you want. Game shot on the sick leg. But you can't stop Conan yourself from hearing that. And Daryl would have just heard that Conan's hit that double to make it 3 all, and they're going to a last leg decider, which I Seven think this game leg. absolutely deserves. First. Couldn't game agree more. Let us revel in how good this game has been. Three 180s. Whitehead. 57. The ultimate darting fighter. That's the first time that I consciously remember I've seen Daryl switch around the board there. 26. Go from the 20s to the 19s to the 18s. He's usually so good on those 19s that once he goes down the bottom there, he doesn't need to switch again. So maybe there is some tension that's coming into this match now in this last leg. 40. Neither of them have got off to a great start, as we can see. Six starts from Daryl, and he's only scored 97. This is all about who gets to the double first. It really doesn't matter if it's a 12 darter or a 32 darter. This is just a valuable leg of darts. Oh, what if this ends up being a double one shootout? I wouldn't put it past them. Oh, that is incredible. From both players, two treble visits, back to back. Whitehead has got to keep pace. 60. He's not far behind. He really needed a treble there. Another treble or uh, one treble or even two treble visit here. Not a treble five. Oh, and not a seven. 42. When you drag the dart left, that is a sign of tension. And Conan's only a dart behind. And he's craving a 140 to halve the score. 60. Oh, it's, just, it's just tied. After 12 darts, we can barely separate them. This I, is tension personified. Yeah, I'm really surprised Conan didn't switch there. 58. He'd love a maximum. Oh. It would leave tops. 
Oh, oh wow! Oh, good and eight. A magnanimous Down maximum from the man wielding the big sword on the back of the shirt. And the 57s don't come to the rescue of Pilgrim. It's now in the hands of the Barbarian. Conan, you require four to make the final. Double ten. Yeah, he's the there. Shot. And the man. Whitehead Conan screams Whitehead. with delight. And Pilgrim is denied in his first Double. defeat of the night. And in stage one, Pilgrim was Mr. Consistency. But the Barbarian is the ultimate fighter. And he will have a chance at the maximum prize. There is the tail of the tape of what was an exceptional semi final 99.63, the best of the night from Whitehead. And Pilgrim, with a typical 90 plus average, it just wasn't enough. He faulted at the end, Whitehead didn't. He's in the final, and Pilgrim is not. And we've got one more semi final to come. Gather your breath. Get yourself a beverage and come back after the break for pain against Usher. And it is, congratulations, Conan Whitehead, our first finalist here at the Modus Super Series. He's one game away from realising his darting dream and becoming the first ever Super Series champion, getting the better of Darryl Pilgrim 4-3 in a thrilling last leg decider. It really was a thrilling match. Darryl Pilgrim got out the tracks firing, leading by two legs to nil, but back came Whitehead with the performance of Champions Night so far. 
an average of 99.63 en route to that victory against Darrell Pilgrim. So he is into the final. He has got the opportunity to win the £20,000 and the trophy. It's all about finding out now who he is going to face in the final. Josh Payne up against Graham Usher is our second semi-final. Josh Payne got here courtesy of, ironically, beating Conan Whitehead by four legs to three. Both his games being won tonight on double five for Josh Payne. He takes on Graham Usher, the gambler who lost out against Pilgrim. But have a look at this 1-6-1 one, one finish. The highlight checkout of the night so far. These two have been two of the favourites to win Champions Week. Only one can make their way through to the final. And with finishes like that, Graham Usher could very much be the man to do so. So only three men now can win the Super Series title, the trophy and the cheque for £20,000. Let's see who our second finalist is going to be by getting the boys on the stage. Your commentary team is Corrine Hammond and Paul Nicholson. But first, your MC and referee, Charlie Corsafine. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Modus Super Series. We're at semi-final time here at the Modus Live Lounge in Portsmouth. And now would you please welcome to the stage our players for our second semi-final. Firstly, it's the maximum, Josh Payne. And please welcome the gambler, Graham Usher. <laughs> Good morning once again, and if you are watching from outside of the UK, hello. And if you are a fan of last leg shootouts, you've come to the right place because we've had four in a row on what has been an incredibly exciting evening. And it may just be starting right here. Josh Payne, who I have christened in the past, Mr. Saturday Night. Can he be Mr. Sunday Morning? because he has the 49-year-old from Scarborough in his way, who is a bit under-dextrous. Thank you, showing ladies and off gentlemen. A bit of skill there with his right Josh hand, but I guarantee first. you every dart will be thrown with his left in this one. Best of seven legs to see who will play Conan Whitehead in the Super Series Champions Week final. And what an act they've got to follow after that first semi-final, Corinne. Oh, that was absolutely an amazing game. It was like... We were forgetting to talk because 60. we were just in awe of what was happening on the dartboard in front of us. It's always a good sign when that happens. But it is fair to say that if Josh Payne is going to win the title tonight, he may have to play a little bit better than he has this evening. Both of his wins tonight have been by the odd leg. 89.86 his... Averaging beating Chris Mason by four legs to three. 50% on the doubles is pretty good. But a regression in form of over 10 points in beating Conan Whitehead by four legs to three. If he's to play Conan again tonight for the title, Joshua he sensed that 78 or 79 average is never going to be enough. You wouldn't think so, but it was enough to beat Conan the last time around. But I, I don't think you'll see 59. the same Conan in that game. Uh, in the final, sorry, is what you saw in that game. Yeah, what you've got with Conan in the final coming up Joshua is someone 90. who is jacked. The adrenaline is there. Is double 15 there? Game shot you the bet it is. Leg. A great Josh 14 Hayes. dart start. And it's amazing with these dart players, isn't it? When you put them in a knockout scenario, they just find more in the tank. Maybe Second because it's a new day now. First. Where it, you know, they've used up Saturdays. We're on to Sundays. Maybe they're gremlins in disguise. <laughs> Don't feed them after midnight. Or was it the Mogwais that you weren't supposed to feed after midnight? Same thing. 98. I know Josh Payne wants this title badly. Lost his tour 100. card at the end of last season. And his career came to a junction. And thanks to 
his trips to Southampton and now his trips to Portsmouth. He's got momentum going into the end of 2022 and into the start of 23. 60. He's still young. He's 28. It's still a very good age to kick on after some adversity the last couple of years. 57. I mean, you say that he's 28, which obviously is still quite young, but he's still been around for a lot of years. It's not like he's, you know, just picked 41. up his darts and here he is. And that just goes to show that there is such a longevity available for a darts career. I mean, Josh is 28. What's Graham? 49, did we see on that? And look, and he's still playing this standard. He's playing in the semi-final of Champions Week at the Super Series. So anything's 81. possible. It's not, there's no age barrier with darts. Graham, you require 160. It's one of the best things about it. Usher on another 160. 120. He's been the king of the big finishes this week. But not this time. No matter how good Josh Payne is, you can't finish 168. Not in this format. Eighty-two. Graham, you're now, Graham, can 40. you equalise? Double ten. Thirty. That is a big error. Josh, you require. He's 86. just given Josh Payne a freebie. Is Josh going to capitalise on it? Another one of those for the bullseye. Oh, 36. well, that wasn't the bullseye wire. I Graham, you require cast a 10. bit of an eye over that one. I'm sure that was the 25 wire. We'll just say that anyway. Game shot oh, the second that's a great day. dart from Graham. Graham Usher. His dart's going quite flat. He couldn't have seen much of that double five. He has a replay of that missed bullseye. It was definitely the 25 wire. Josh to throw first. Game on. I mean, if Josh tells the story later, it was probably in and out of the bullseye. That's how dart players roll, though. I've heard many a story from 78. dart players saying, oh, I just averaged 110 and lost, when it was probably closer to 75. But then they brought in this wonderful 100. thing called the internet, where scores were remembered. And now we have a very... Accurate picture of how players perform. And if you are curious, this is how 100. they're performing in this game. Which is not as exciting as the previous semi-final. But it's only just getting 100. started. I don't think one person has left this arena since the start. They are completely engrossed in this tonight. 85. But what a display that we have been afforded here tonight. Though you can tell... This is Champions Week. 123. And we start again on Monday morning with week one of stage two. Some incredible players 96. for next week, which will be revealed all in due course. 140. Right now, you don't Josh want to be a gambler. You want to be sure of what comes next and one thing graham is sure of is that he's getting a look at 38 graham for the lead for a break of throw game shot and it goes play. and he's graham at the halfway Usher. point is josh payne potentially going to have his heart broken once again on saturday night full flag it's graham to throw first or sunday game morning on. Josh Payne earlier this year was going to Saturday night and winning proficiently, efficiently. 59. His first title came in Southampton in week one of the year. 58. He went on to finish equal fourth or fourth place in the Champions Week. Then he won week four, phase two. And he chose to skip phase three, but came back to win phase four. That Champions Week was his. And the champion of champions in the summertime, both Graham Usher and Josh Payne were there. Graham was third, Josh was fourth. They've been following each other all year. But since then, Usher has won on a Saturday night. Josh hasn't. 
100. Very much like the previous semi-final, Corinne, the averages are starting to climb as the intensity grows. They just needed a couple of legs to settle into it. 96. The beauty of best of seven. You, you haven't got a great deal of time to settle. Can Josh bring us level Josh at 2 all? 78. This is enormous. Double 12. Game bravo for 2-2. Two two. And I say bravo for a reason, because his nickname on tour used to be Johnny Bravo, because he's got the body shape Big of a play. triangle like the cartoon first. character. Game on. <laughs> he's got the darts back too. And we are all having to get our breath back. 140. This is what these semi-finals deserve, though, Paul. They deserve to be great matches like this that are going leg for leg, that are tied, that, you know, 99. there's all the drama involved. If you miss a double, you're going to get trounced on because someone's there waiting to mop up after you. 140. I've known Josh a few years. I used to practice with him ahead of big tournaments. He was a brilliant sparring 21. partner. I could always tell from his facial expressions as to when he was going after it just a little bit more. He just scrunches up a bit more, 81. intensifies the focus. He's definitely got that right now, and it's working here in leg five. 85. Joshua required 140. Just a simple ton layup, he'll be hoping. To leave double top, it's not going to work out. No, he really wanted to get that 82. first uh, above the treble 20. 100. And Graham can't get to a Josh finish. Josh requires 58. As Josh takes 58. Graham Usher may not have many chips left. Are you saying that his chips are down? 18. They're dwindling. But in a roulette sense, the wheel is still spinning. 100. We don't know where the Joshua ball's going to land right 40. now. Does it land on red 20? Or is it red 10? 20. It's neither. Graham, it's still spinning. 96. Oh, he went for double 18 for 38. tops. 38. This one is getting super edgy. Yeah, I've said before, I'm one double's hard enough. Don't. Joshua don't required need to do 20. Two tens. Fives again. Game oh, it's been his best play. mate all night long. Josh Who likes fives? Stick your hand up, Josh, because it's helping you enough. Nobody misses fives. Sick play gets Graham to throw first. Game on. There was a point in time that I used to like double five only because I'm so terrible at tops and tens. 140. So I, I found myself on double five a lot. I used to say it. Double 16 has paid my mortgage a lot. Double 10 has cost me more titles than any other double on the board. And double 10 has not been kind to Josh Payne, but double five has been... The ultimate banker. And Graham Usher's chips are down now. But look at the way he's responding. Let me remind you that we've had four consecutive 4-3 four, matches here on finals night of Champions Week. This is a gargantuan effort from Usher here in leg six. Yeah, this is... I mean, he's going to be back for the 86, puts that away. Then we're in a last leg decider again. He's going to have six darts. 41. Graham, you if I've got any nerves 86. left, might as well shred them. Double 16. 54. Very much like the previous leg. Usher's got a bucket full of darts to take care of things. Payne has got to get himself on a finish. 
Maybe PTA. that's what he needs, though. Maybe he needs Graham the pressure behind 32. him to make sure that he can put it away. Let's find out. Game shot on the sequence. Because we're going all the way once Graham again. Usher. Hold on to your hats. It's a one-leg shootout to see who makes the final to take on Conan Whitehead. Seventh and final leg. It's Josh to throw first. What a night it has been. Both have experience. Both have been at the thick end of tournaments. Josh Payne has got the more storied career with 21 less years One in the bank. But look at that from the gambler. 80. That's the first maximum of the match. This is incredible that it was that, that's the, only, the first 180 of the match. I could have sworn there's been others. Well, Graham Usher has had a nine daughter this year. 45. In what is, without a shadow of a doubt, the performance of the year. He had a 4-2 victory where he got four legs on the spin 41. with four ton plus checkouts, a 167 and a nine daughter in the same match. And look what he's doing! One this is outrageous for Mosha. 180, 45, 180. Josh needs a treble here. 43. He can't get to a finish. Graham, oh. you're requiring 96. It's all in the hands of Usher. This time he does the right thing. He lays up for 56. tops. This game is in his hands. And he knows it. You can just see by the look of his face there. Is it Sunday morning heartbreak once again 96. for Josh Payne? Graham, you require 40. Or is there a twist in the tail? Game. There is no twist. But what there is, Graham is a great rusher. And Conan Whitehead final in the future. What a fight back from Graham Usher. An incredible performance in that last leg shootout with two maximums, the only two maximums of the entire match. Payne has to leave us. It was a bonus for him to be here this week, but he put up an almighty fight. But Usher was ultimately better statistically on the doubles and the overall average. We will all need five minutes just to get our breath back after two incredible semi-finals. But before we go to our next break, how about we have a little look back at the highlights of stage one? Because believe me, there have been plenty. We'll see you after this break. Let's have a look at the highlights. When the final comes, I hope you are ready. <laughs> Know the roots. Steve Brown missed it early on today. But Connor Ooh, here, he's oh, the man, you? as he hits a nine-dart finish. Hang on a minute. Game's Biggest the finish of the week so far. Ryan what a Palmer. shot from Ryan Palmer. Ryder. There's one of them. There's the other. What a way to save the match. Bullseye. Yeah, Four, one, six, game seven. Show them. Game Fabulous Sean finish Palmer. from Rob Collins Rob for double 17. Game we Sean haven't seen many double 17s. Murray. Who could get it to take Tebow through? Game what Sean a thing to do! Incredible shot. And Absolutely ridiculous. sensational stuff. Vanessa is also there. Lee Schoen is out. Brilliant from Kevin So is it going to be the story of all stories? Tops. Game. Chris Schultz.
And so it all comes down to this. It is final time here at the Modus Super Series. And it's going to be Graham Usher who is going to take on Conan Whitehead for the £20,000 top prize. What a dramatic final leg that was. Graham Usher getting the game's only two maximums <laughs> at the most crucial time. I'm still trying to find the words that can describe the ability to do that when you're gunning for your biggest ever paycheck and the opportunity to double it. And maybe it's just in the stars that someone who has won Group A this week is finally going to get it done after weeks of trying. People have tried it, they've missed, but the gambler has got one more roll of the dice. And this is a great final mm. because you've got the ultimate fighter in Conan Whitehead who's got his fans here, but I thought that Josh Payne was going to get through. I honestly did. But the ability for Graham Musher to come through with those two maximums and get rid of that game in 13 darts, outstanding. I think it's fair to say maybe before this concept came to fruition, everybody knew Conan Whitehead for what he did in the BDO World Championships a few years ago. Maybe people not so much with Graham Usher. And this is genuinely the biggest match of his life. It is now. He made the World Masters final stages at the Circus Tavern in 2019. And that's where he came onto my radar. But... Let's face facts, the pandemic came at a horrendous time for Graham Usher because just when he was starting to get some momentum with his career, get some form as well, everything stopped. So the fact that he's now got his momentum back through the Super Series, he's now gunning for a big prize which could potentially change his life. Well, it has been a dramatic half an hour, 45 minutes or so. The players will now head backstage and are backstage getting themselves ready for that final. But the big call is... Who's going to win this final? Well, myself and Corinne Hammond had a conversation and I've spoke with Chris Mason at times throughout the course of the last 12 weeks. There's been a certain aura about Conan Whitehead, the sheer resistance of I will not be defeated. And I've got to go with Conan. Uh, he's the kind of person when his back is against the wall, has this incredible ability to come out swinging. But I'll tell you what, if... Graham Usher's back is against the wall like it was in that semi-final. Look at the way he swings himself out. I think it's got to be 4-3. It surely has to be, considering what we've seen gone, tonight. Hasn't it? It's been a tale of 4-3s. This has been, without question, the best night we've had under this roof. It's not even over. But Conan's going to win it for me. Because there may be one more bit of drama to come. The final is coming up shortly, but we never rest. There's no rest here at the Super Seas because we get going with stage two Monday morning for 9.30. And we can exclusively reveal the players that are going to be taking part in Group A for Monday morning. We are going to see James Hovell in action. He actually played on the opening night here. Jim McEwen, who won the Champion of Champions in July. Shane McGurk is going to be under this roof. We're also going to see Robert Owen in action, the man who won his tour card. And we've got the new initiative with the ADC as well. So we've got two qualifiers coming through there. Kevin Garcia and Michael Huntley are going to be the two players that come through that system. And just quickly, Nico, how good is it to have that link up with the ADC? Because it gives players an aspiration to come and play here through that ranking system. Well, it has been a bit of a grey area over the last couple of years. People saying, well, how do I get to play in what was the live league and now the Super Series? And the, the rule always was you had to have done something in your career to get here. But now the affiliation with the the ADC when people ask that question it's a case of right go and qualify then find yourself an ADC event qualify and you could be here what the ADC have done is incredible over the last 12 months since the pandemic started to dissipate a little bit what we're starting to find is that the amateur game and the semi-professional games are starting to really get traction and now there is that partnership between the Super Series and the ADC just wait because we are going to unearth some more talent well, it's final time here then at the Super Seas. Looking forward to it, Nico? Nah. <laughs> of course I am. <laughs> that was a silly question, wasn't it? So, after 13 weeks, it all comes down to this. It is Conan Whitehead up against Graham Usher for the £20,000 prize, the trophy and the inaugural title of Modus Super Series champion. Let's get the boys on the stage. This man's going to join Corinne Hammond in commentary. Your MC for the final time tonight is Charlie Corsafine. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Modus Super Series Champions Week final. We are live on Sporty Stuff TV here at the Modus Live Lounge in Portsmouth.
And now would you please welcome to the stage the first of our finalists. It's the Barbarian, Conan Whitehead! And now would you please welcome to the stage his opponent. It's the gambler, Graham Let the mood settle here at the Modus Live Lounge. Let the nerves present themselves because these guys are about to play one of, if not the biggest game of their lives. In a monetary sense, it is without a doubt the biggest game of their lives because they've never played for 10 grand before. But they know for a fact that they've got 10 grand in the back pocket already, but they want 10 more. And they want to be the first person to win a Champions Week under this roof. Two of the biggest hitters in Super Series history. They have six you, wins and between them. First leg, it's Conan to throw first. Game on. Incredible respect between these two. Great to see. But this is Conan Whitehead who came through that thrilling semi-final with Daryl Pilgrim. 100. What do we say about those semi-finals, Corinne Hammond, my esteemed co-commentator for this final? How do they get 24. themselves into the same sort of bubble after the adrenaline spikes they've had in the last hour? I know, it's just, uh, it's just amazing, really, but they've passed those semis, and now they're into the final. How have they geared themselves up for this? Let's just hope that this match is as enthralling as the last two semi-finals have been. Well, that was an incredible turnaround there for Graham Usher, who didn't start particularly well in this leg, but he's definitely sped 22. up a bit. Not one person has left 100. this crowd over the last couple of hours. Everybody wants to see who picks up that trophy. If I was in the player's shoes right now. It's not about the money. 100. It's about one word. Legacy. To I be the saying. first to do something is a big deal. 60. I was just going to say champion. Great word. Everybody wants to be a champion. And if you think about 21. the career of these guys... Well, with all due respect... Graham, you require 137. Graham Usher's done in his career. He won the Lincolnshire Open back in 2019. Which is a, a big county tournament. But this is bigger. One hundred and thirty-one. Oh, an absolute fantastic Graham, you require shot ninety-seven to put the real pressure on Graham to take out this ninety-seven for the opening leg. Does he go double-double? No, he doesn't. Doesn't need to. Eighty-five. Conan, you require so 32. much in the way of tension out there. As Conan goes for double sixteen. Game shot first blood, the first one. Whitehead. Conan Whitehead. Look, he's definitely got some fans out there. That's probably just Shira Lee that you can hear. Second leg, it's Graham to throw first. Game one on. down, three to go. And when you're playing against Graham, you don't 100. have to wait too long for your turn. No, it's a really great pace, this match, as, you know, the last couple of games have been as well. 42. 
That treble 18 switch does not come up trumps this time. 121. Just looking through the career of Conan Whitehead. He was part of the England international team in 25. 2018. Playing for England with the likes of Daniel Day, a good friend of his. Mark McGinney, 45. who we saw very recently here at the Super Series. Scott Baker, who we also saw. Some great England players in that squad, including someone who was sitting in this very seat 100. seven days ago, Scott Mitchell. If you're watching, Scott, very good morning to you. But if you look at the individual efforts of Whitehead in his career, he doesn't have a title of note. So by that virtue, and looking at Graham's career as well, this Graham is without required, a shadow of a doubt the biggest game of their lives. There's 109 left. 40. And Whitehead is very much in this leg. You just wonder if Conan has shattered his stem and maybe that's why the flight was on the floor. That's why you've always got to carry spares, folks. I was on that stage just over a week ago and one of the points in my darts came out. It's a good job I had a spare one in the case. A spare point? How would you get that back in there like that? Oh. Yeah, the point is still out of the dart. Yeah. I had to go to a very different setup. I had a, I had a dart in the case with a different point, and I just had to use it for the rest of the night. 58. Graham, you require 90. That's the first time it's ever happened in my career. But let's see what Graham can do with 65 left. 50. He gives Conan a free hit at Conan, 136. Conan, you require 136. Ninety-six. Graham can't miss this time. Graham, you require forty. Double ten. Thank you. Thirty. And you have to wonder. Conan, you require that forty. Just put him off his rhythm there. He is a rhythm player. He likes to get rid of those darts really quickly. And that was as slow a visit as you will ever get from Musha. Game Incredibly, second, that's a 20 Come dart break of throw, and Whitehead now will serve first for a 3 0 lead. Third, I know that Whitehead's got his fans first. out there, but there's still Game on. a great deal of sportsmanship between these two players. Conan has to know that he was lucky in that leg there, so he's not going to take anything for granted. 140. And there you see Usher's had five chances at doubles in the first two legs. He's missed them all, whereas Whitehead is 50%, which 63. is pretty good. And maybe the gambler is running out of chips again. The last time he was running out of chips, he found some more somehow. But he's going to have to dig very deep from here. He's going to have to go to his back pocket 140. Now, see what's in his back pocket. Uh, the old reserve chips. Mm. We have to get the checkbook out. 121. The strength of the scoring from Whitehead all of a sudden is giving him breathing space. He's feeling 95. comfortable and confident. He's got a, a two-leg buffer here. So you, you have to be feeling a little more relaxed now. He feels like he's just get up there Coming in, you require and continue 126. playing. And, and the more treble 20s he hits or treble 19s he hits, then you know that, that's just going to escalate it even further. Doesn't want to be hitting any ones, though. 40. But knows that he will be back for the 86 with Graham back on 272. There was a call there for maybe bullseye at 25 with the last dart. 25 would have left him on. 125. Something a Conan bit more gettable. 86. Now he's got to go 18 for Bull. Very safe single. Button. 46. Oh. He's Graham laid up. 147. Wow. Did not see that coming. 
and we know how good Graham is on these big checkouts. He gambles. He doesn't hit. AC3. Conan, you're required. Conan's gamble. Does it pay off? Game shot. Double oh, five. Conan what a Whitehead. story that double has had tonight. 3-0 Whitehead in the final. And Usher now needs to double Put down it's to twice first. if Game he wants off. to get the jackpot. Incredible stuff. Make no mistake, this is a vociferous 41. atmosphere here at the Modus Live Lounge. A heavily whitehead audience. Maybe a touch of genius in bringing so many people here. 180! He means business. What is this going to do 95. potentially for Whitehead's darts career? Just to re-emphasize something we said earlier in the evening around seven or eight months ago he wasn't even throwing 100. darts he didn't want to do it anymore he came back to us he said i want another crack he won his first week back 60. he's won another week since then to get here he's one of the most prolific weekly winners on the super series roster 100. Funnily enough, he did mention to me, oh, actually, I don't know whether it was him or, or Shirley, mentioned that since the birth of his daughter, 100. Ada, who happens to be three months Conan, old you require today, 121. Sunday, he's all of a sudden found his absolute hunger to win again. Are you telling me that he could win 77. on his daughter's birthday? No, it's, she's three months old today. Ah, three months. Yeah. It's good enough for me. 41. Is 44. Conan, you require good enough 44. for cool. I bet his heart is pumping at a million miles an hour at this point. Double 16. Game Whitehead shot. wins the and title. The and wins and the, the jackpot with it. Champion. Under the confetti here. Go Slide lounge. Whitehead is the man. He is the last man standing, and he is the person that cannot be moved from the pinnacle here of stage one. Four nil in the final. He just had too much in the arsenal for the gambler. What a stage! What a Champions Week! What a finals night! And that may be the catalyst for the career of Conan the Barbarian. Great sportsmanship between the two. What do you say about that, Corinne? Oh, that was absolutely fantastic. I mean, not the best games in terms of what we've seen them play earlier in the evening, but just to be able to go out there in the final, made relatively no mistakes, wanted to get the job done, and he absolutely did it. What an incredible final it was. It didn't have the stats that we hoped for, but it had the drama. It was building all night to that crescendo. But the man with the ultimate crescendo in stage one is Conan Whitehead. He's on the stage. So is Henry Deacon. Henry will find out right now how our champion is feeling. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in for stage one. Let's hear from our champion, Conan Whitehead. Conan Whitehead, Modus Super Series champion. How does that sound? I'll let you know in the morning. <laughs> I mean, you've had a dramatic evening this evening. Uh, obviously, you got through 4 3 in the semi final. What was your thinking going into that final against Graham? I'm not going to lie to you, I don't remember playing the final. <laughs> it was slow. Nice. 20 grand! Yeah, 20 grand! <laughs> I, can tell, I can tell it's a very, very emotional moment for you. And a few months ago, you came back here to the Live League after a little bit of time away, then came back here to the Super Series. What has this tournament done to you in terms of your Dungerton career? Aged me 20 years for a start. <laughs> but, no, seriously, I mean, when I come back here, it was, uh, well, as most people know now, my baby was born and literally took everything off of, every pressure off of me. Mm -hmm. And I've played 
this week with no pressure on me. So now I'm just, well, I'm back enjoying the game, so happy days. How much has family helped you to rekindle your love for the sport again? Well, family's been everything to me at the minute. I mean, without my family, I wouldn't even rekindle the sport at all. I would it was only because my missus was pushing me back into darts. I, I was ready to give it all up. Where does this title for you rank in what you've won in your career? Well, like I said, I'll let you know in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, this, this title here, I mean, and it's been a hard slog these last, what, 30, this is thir week 13 now. So, and it's been a hard slog. And everyone that knows that plays in these, the Motor Series, it's week in, week out, you're, you're up at seven in the morning trying to get ready for darts and then you're back here at 10 o'clock at night trying to get ready for darts and it's horrible times to play. But, well, <laughs> it's, it's paid off. <laughs> You did play too bad under the conditions, did you? You're now the champion. £20,000 better off. What we're going to do now is we're going to get the presentation underway. And to do that, let's bring on the former players' champion, the asset, Paul Nicholson. Did you back me, Nico? <laughs> and so, after 13 weeks of competition, your champion picking up the cheque for £20,000 the trophy, but most importantly of all, the title of Modus Super Series champion is the barbarian Conan Whitehead! And so that is it for us here at the Super Series. Conan, I'm just going to ask you to do one more thing. Just look in the barrel of that camera down there because after 13 weeks of competition, that man is your champion. Thank you to everyone who has tuned in to us over the last 13 weeks. And the best bit, we do it all again Monday morning from 9.30am. Thank you so much for your company. We'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye for now. The Moda Super Series, brought to you in association with... Bet365, Betfair, Betfred, Coral, Labrooks, Paddy Power, Unibet and William Hill.